Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Tsunade goes back in time to save neglected Naruto part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. Naruto sat in bed recovering from his massive fight with Madara Echeha and a more pleasant encounter he had only 10 minutes or so ago. Naruto was once again covered in bandages and recovering in the hospital, both arms were broken and he had been massively injured. He had used his Rasen Shuriken twice to actually kill Madara Cha. This broke both his arms and nearly poisoned him because of the damage done to him when he used that particular jutsu. Given all this Naruto was in an incredibly good mood. Shizune had just left after acquiring a sperm specimen the easy way, condom and riding the blonde to completion. The second riding had ended about 10 minutes ago, that one without a condom, Naruto smiled at the memory. She had said it was for Tsune to continue the Senju clan with her as the surrogate mother. He would be a father yet again as Xian was expecting their first child. The request from Shizune and Tsune was confusing as he thought of Tsune as a grandmotherly type, but could not understand why she would want to also have children with him, with Shizune acting as birthing mother. Naruto had enjoyed the lovemaking sessions with Shizune, one of several over this last week. Apparently either she was enjoying it too much or she wanted to become a mother of his children also. Naruto was not as dumb as most though he was, he had noticed that several females in the village appeared to be pursuing him, Hinata, Isoribi, Yakumo and several civilian females his age kept on following him and hinted at possible dates with the blonde Jinchuriki. He had decided not to act like Sasuke by running and spurning the attention of the females that seemed to want his attention. Heck he wanted the attention and if he could get it without going to extremes he was all for that. He did try not to be a man who was just going to use women to satisfy his own carnal desires, seeing as that was the path that Jiraiya had went. No, Naruto wanted to have a relationship with the women in his life. His relationship with a certain pink-haired teammate had changed to more of a sisterly relationship over the last few years, if still a little abusive. Sakura then entered the room with a gentle smile. Hey Naruto, you look chipper today, but it smells kind of stuffy in here. Let's open a window. Sakura stated as she moved over to the window and then opened the window. Now isn't that much better. How are you healing from your fight? Naruto sheepishly looked at Sakura. Shizune was just here and said I healing just fine. She said I would be ready to leave in a couple weeks, but definitely no more Rasen Shuriken, Naruto exclaimed as he blushed profusely. Okay, that is nice Naruto, but you still need some rest and I have something here for you. Sakura said as she pushed a needle into Naruto's arm. Naruto looked up to protest but was already getting sleepy. It's time for you to see our old teammate. He has a surprise for you. Sakura whispered under her breath. Tsunade shook her head as she was dealing with three females in front of her, Hinata Hayuga, Kinoichi, an heir to the Hayuga clan, Aisiribi, former experiment for Orochimaru, dear friend of Naruto, and finally Yakumo Kurama, heir to a family of Jinjutsu specialists. All three were pestering Tsunade to let them all marry Naruto or at the very least date him. Look girls I don't want to do this, but I have to keep Naruto-kun from you, Tsunade protested. But Hokage-sama, Naruto is the best for each of us. Aisiribi stated. Naruto-kun is loved by Hinata-sama, Yakumo-sama and by me. We all love him for who he is. He has saved each of us at one point or another. Our feelings are not because he has become a powerful shinobi or because he is to become Hokage. We all love him in our own way, but the council had enacted a law that would never allow him to marry. This was done before I returned to become the Hokage. There is no way I can change it. If we could go back in time we might be able to change it. Heck as time has passed, I hate to admit it, but I would love to marry the knucklehead too. Tsunade replied with a blush. Their conversation was interrupted by several screams outside of Tsunade's window. Up on the top of the Hokage's tower, Sakura held Naruto by the neck over the edge of the tower rail, as another figure appeared next to her holding a young blonde-haired woman. Sakura, wake him. The figure behind her demanded. Sakura pulled out a syringe and pushed into to Naruto's arm. Naruto slowly opened his eyes. What is the meaning of this Sakura? Naruto growled out as he figured he was not in his hospital room with the wind was blowing up his hospital gown and Sakura having her hand around his neck. Well you succeeded in your promise of bringing him back, but too bad your affection was wasted on me, I never loved you. I care about you, but I still love Sasuke, so I am apologizing now for we are going to do, just understand it is for the best. Sasuke-kun says he will finish what the Yandame began 19 years ago, he also says he is going to marry me. I am truly sorry, Naruto, I really am, but this has to be. Sakura said as she wanted Naruto to understand. So you never loved me, not even a little. Naruto asked with a tear fell from his eye, and Sakura shook her head. A scream was heard from below. So you are going to kill the monster. Right, team? 
Naruto yelled as he was unable to move his arms which were still bandaged and mostly useless. So team, you think they will see you as savior. What did you do for them? I know you suffered, but it was not to the same level as mine was. Naruto suddenly noticed whom Sasuke was holding and terror struck his heart. What are you doing with Xian-chan? What do you know of suffering Naruto? My family was killed on orders from this village. Sasuke protested as he underscored his rage. What do I know? Shall we move backwards? My teammates abandoned me, you first and now Sakura. Kakashi barely trained me, but showed favoritism towards you. You got everything I wanted. You were never shunned by most of the village, nor were you given tests at the academy that were either meant for Chunin or had Jinjutsu put on them. Did you have to teach yourself to read and write? No you had parents to help teach you that. I have been overcharged by most of shops in the village, heck most wouldn't even let me in the door, others would sell me outdated food, but hey the great Ichiha could get a discount in any store. Best of all your family didn't put a curse seal upon you, no I got a stage higher than that. I got a Hokage to do that for me. Naruto explained as his neck began to hurt. I never asked for them to show me any favors, they just respected that I was in Ichiha. Sasuke countered. Naruto rolled his eyes at Sasuke's rebuttal. So all the hurt and anguish they heaped upon me along with what both of you are doing now was only because you are in Ichiha and I had the Kaiubi sealed within me without my permission. Sasuke looked out over the crowd that had begun to assemble and yelled to them. Everyone. I am going to destroy the Kaiubi reborn, Naruto Uzumaki. Sasuke then drew his sword and impaled the blonde in the heart. Goodbye Naruto. You were my friend. You made me the last Ichiha and for that you must die. I no longer seek the Kaiubi as it would only get in the way of my plans. Sasuke whispered into Naruto's ear as he pulled the sword to the side, using Naruto's ribs as a guide, and sprayed blood from Naruto's destroyed heart. Oh, by the way there is a poison on my blade that will not allow you to heal. I figure you have about two minutes to live. What will you do now? Other than die. Oh and I will not let this bitch have your demon spawn either. Naruto watched as Sasuke picked up the unconscious Shion and pushed the sword all the way through her chest while he smiled. Now you can die with your whore. Sasuke yelled as he and Sakura dropped the pair off the tower. Naruto and Shion landed in a heap at the bottom of the tower. I have rid the village of the evil of the Kaiubi. I have also ensured that it did not have any more demon spawn. Some of the crowd applauded, some were revolted by what had just happened. Naruto winced in pain as Tsunade, Hinata, Isoribi, and Yakumo screamed their horror as they all knelt beside the stricken pair. Naruto coughed up blood and then grinned. I am sorry Abachan, girls. Is Shion chan alright? Naruto asked apologetically, Tsunade shook her head as tears rolled down her eyes. They saw his eyes turn red with slits. You won't get away with this team, and your Sharingan will not stop the Kaiubi this time. You are evil, to have killed me in cold blood, one of the women I love, and our unborn child. Naruto called out with all of his strength as he was surrounded by red chakra. Naruto smiled as the red chakra burst forth from him. It formed a large fox with nine tails. Tsunade and the girls were all wept as they had jumped down to see what they could do for Naruto and Shion. They all knew there was little they could do stop Naruto and Shion from dying. The fox looked angrily at both Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke-kun what do we do? Sakura asked meekly. Sasuke tried to force his will upon the Kaiubi, but it didn't work. What is going on? Why would you not submit to my will, demon fox Sasuke asked the Kaiubi. I have a little tale to tell the people of Konoha before I kill you. Do they remember the founding of Konoha? The Ichiha and Senju both agreed to found a village so that they would no longer have to fight each other. The Ichiha have had a hold on me since times bygone. The Senju could also control all of the Biju through their Mokuten ability. Now that the one who was responsible for the attack on Konoha that happened when Naruto was born is dead, Madara Ichiha, I can end your pathetic evil line, Ichiha. You think you deserve revenge for the choice that your brother of the village made. Well let me give you some information, Ichiha, Madara is the one who made me attack the village in order to kill off the Ichiha, and that included you, idiot. The kid, Naruto, has kept my anger at bay for all these 19 years. Now the honorable Sasuke Chiha kills his best friend and a pregnant woman in cold blood with the help of the pink banshee. You are not shinobi, you are murderers and without honor. Naruto loved you, but others loved him and you strung him along like he was nothing. Well, he is getting another chance, the Shinigami has agreed to help us fix this. So I will take pleasure in hurting those who have hurt the kit starting with you too. The fox stated as its jaws closed upon both Sasuke and Sakura, killing both instantly. The fox went on a rampage for the next 20 minutes killing people but leaving others alone. Only those who had either hurt or injured Naruto were killed by the Kaiubi. Tsunade and Hinata both worked furiously to try to stem the blood from both Naruto and Shion. They were able to extend their lives for several precious moments. Isoribi held his hand as she wept. Naruto watched as the four females worked their hardest to try save both Shion and himself. 
he knew that their work was in vain, as he had torn the seal on the Kyuubi's cage. If I only had the time I would want to try to be with each one of you. Naruto said quietly. Ikumo gently kissed Naruto on the lips as tears hit his face. We all love you Naruto-kun, if we could we would give you all that you have missed. Anada's eyes streamed tears as she worked to heal his shredded heart. No, Naruto-kun, not yet, I love you too much to let you go now. Tsunade shook her head as she worked on Xion. If we only had more time we might be able to fix them both. She will be missed, but there is a way to fix this, it will take quite a bit of my power to do it, but I propose a way to fix this and have the kit back. Do you accept? The fox asked quietly, as the woman just nodded. I can bring one of you back in a new full body, but the others only as spirits. Since you are the oldest and all of the kid I will send you back in a body, the other three will take their spirits back. We will also take Xian's spirit back. Then you can either take over your younger bodies or you can merge with the current spirit. If you just take over you will kill your younger spirit, I advise against it. Sunade, was it? Sunade nodded to the fox's question. I will give you a new body so that like the others you can be with the kid like you so wanted, but there will be a catch though. Tsunade blushed and tried to deny it. What do you mean? You all wanted kits from the Naruto-kun. Do not deny it I can smell it on all of you. I can also see it in your grief. Do not think I do this for any reason other than my own survival. This is a one-time offer from the Shinigami and I do not want to waste it. I will die here in less than a half an hour. So here is how it will go. The four girls and I will merge with our younger selves. Yutsunade will appear in Konoha in a younger body. The kid will be about 12 years old, as will all the girls. The Shinigami also wants you, Tsunade to follow Naruto to find a certain individual that should not have died years ago, she will also agree to share the kit with all of you. We are returning to the time just before Naruto left for the wave country. I am sure you know whom I speak. I will be asked as Tsunade nodded. You are referring to the fake hunter Nin, I presume? Tsunade asked and the fox nodded. If we can have Naruto come back we will do anything. Hinata added as both the others nodded agreement. The fox dissipated, and then all four women were surrounded by red chakra, none were burned, but it did hurt. All of them screamed and then passed out, and then passed away. Tsunade woke up in the Senju clan house and realized she was completely naked. She awoke in one of the guest bedrooms on the bed, along with the worst headache she had ever had. She found some clothes that seemed to fit her, as she found a full-length mirror and saw that her body was that of her 14th year or so. Boy is Naruto-kun in for a big surprise when he gets older. Tsunade thought to herself. She then noticed her hair was a slightly lighter shade than it was when she was 14. There was also a nagging presence in the back of her mind. She quickly put on the clothes she found and raided some family money so that she could get some items for the trip to the wave country. Tsunade then went to market and purchased several things, kunai, shuriken, food rations, and feminine hygiene supplies. The thing that bothered her was people kept on calling her Yoshiko-sama. She then found Naruto walking with his pack towards the gates. She made sure not to make eye contact that would happen after she had saved Haku. Tsunade walked out of the village and followed Naruto just to keep an eye on him. Anada woke up in her bed and got ready to do a mission with Kurunai-sensei. She decided she needed to talk to her sensei about her feelings for a certain blonde. She also did her best to talk to her younger self as it kept on passing out on her. This is going to make merging a little harder than I thought. I really do hate these D-ranked missions. Isaribi had an easy time as she woke in her shack outside of the village near Demon Island and explained to her younger self that if they merged, they would find someone to love them for who they were not despise her for what they are. The younger embraced her so quickly it was almost disturbing. Isaribi was happy now that she knew where to go now. All she had to do was leave that idiot of a scientist and head towards Konoha. Ikumo was having it almost as easy as Isaribi as she and her younger self had quickly dispatched it, while Xian was having a hard time as her younger self did not quite believe that she would find someone who could actually change someone's destiny and most of all love her for her. And to know that her older self was pregnant and had died was also quite a shock. This would take some time for both of them to be able to get along. Tsunade was not doing so well either, she had followed Naruto's team out of the village as she had shown her papers the guards who let her pass with few questions. She looked at the papers the name on it was Yoshiko Senju, daughter of Tsunade Senju, age 14. As she followed the team at a distance she saw the fight with the demon brothers and watched as Naruto froze at the start of the fight, only to be hurt by one of the assailants. Kakashi, why did you bring them out so early? They were just not ready. She thought questioningly. She watched as Naruto made a determined speech and pushed his kunai into his hand to let the poison out. Tsunade rolled her eyes as Kakashi warned him that he might bleed to death from his actions. Tsunade had to hold her temper so that she did not jump out just to kill both the Achiha and her former apprentice-to-be. She then followed them across the water as they moved towards the island. 
she wanted to make sure that she did not interfere with what was happening until the time was right. Tsunade watched the antics of Naruto as he tried to make sure that Sasuke didn't show him up. Naruto threw a kunai at an animal and got berated for going wild with his equipment. She then sensed it, as did Naruto and Kakashi. Naruto then threw a kunai right at the chakra signature, even though it was well hidden. Tsunade smiled she saw that his senses were working. It angered her as she watched Sakura berate and hit Naruto for scaring her. Kakashi then called for everyone to duck as Ibuza's sword nearly decapitated the whole group. Tsunade sighed in relief as Naruto had avoided injury. Tsunade watched as the introductions finished and the fight began. Naruto and Sasuke were holding their weapons properly, but Sakura appeared deficient. Then the mist completely covered the battlefield. After several moments Kakashi blew the mist away with his chakra. Sasuke seemed frozen by the killing intent and intensity of the chakra. Tsunade chuckled lightly as she watched Sasuke nearly kill himself. Tsunade watched as the battle played out. She watched in horror as Naruto was nearly killed, but he then gained the courage to stand up against Zabuza as Zabuza trapped Kakashi. She nearly cheered as Naruto used his shadow clones and henge to trick Zabuza into releasing Kakashi. She sensed Haku showing up and they both watched the battle. The battle concluded when Haku disabled Zabuza, making it look as if she had killed him. Tsunade heard a voice in her head. Yes that is her, but the time is not right just yet. Naruto was then forced to drag Kakashi's unconscious body to Tazuna's house, and she then lost track on them inside the house. Tsunade began to search the island for a place to stay and to also find out where Zabuza and Haku were hiding. She knew the story of Gato and the Land of Waves, or at least the one that was told to her. She found their hideout quickly enough but was not sure how to meet with Haku and definitely did not want to meet Zabuza. Tsunade left and headed to a nice place to camp near Tazuna's house. I wonder if Naruto is able to contact Kaiubi yet. Tsunade thought to herself. She again heard a voice in her head. No, he has not and will not until either you help him or Jiraiya again throws him off the cliff. He will be able to access my chakra but not me. So we should wait and watch to make sure there has been no corruption of the time stream. So now do not ask how I am able to talk to you, you are just in close proximity to the kit and we have a couple surprises for you. I would like it if you would either interfere after the girl is injured or keep her from protecting Zabuza. I can offer you some chakra to help if you want to heal her after she is injured by Kakashi, but you must be in direct contact with the kit for it to work. Tsunade raised an eyebrow. Kaiubi. The voice in her head chuckled. No I am the festival bunny. Of course I am the Kaiubi. Who else do you think would talk to you in your head? Oh by the way you are the only one I can do this to other than the kit. As for the chakra for healing you will need to ask the kit to touch your shoulders and mold some chakra, I will send you the needed chakra. Do not tell him what I told you, as we need the timeline to not be too messed up. Tsunade nodded as she went back near the house and set up camp near a field that held medicinal herbs. So how can I talk to you and the others can't? For one your body was brought back to life with one of my future tales. You my dear, are also a Jinchuriki. Kaiubi answered. Tsunade stopped making camp and wore a confused look. What do you mean I'm a Jinchuriki? Because your body was brought to life my chakra tail and one of my dying kits, you are more than you seem you shall be the kit's prime mate. The others will be subservient to you. I know the Hyuga girl would rather be the prime, but you are a stronger mate and they will fall into line. The Shinigami also deemed this as he has power over life and death. Oh, one other thing. You must mate with him first, then the others may mate with him, but you must be first or all of you will die, and that includes the kid and myself. I will explain it all in time, but you do not have to worry about mating with him until the kid is a little older. Do you have a cover story for when you meet the kid yet? The Kaiubi inquired with a chuckle. Wait what do you mean one of your dying kit? Tsunade inquired almost frantic. We, meaning the Shinigami and I, have used the miscarried child you had from your younger body and a kit of mine that was dying. It was sealed within you before the miscarriage occurred. I am sure glad the Shinigami is on our side. Have you tested your chakra yet? It will have a demonic tinge to it. Well you are similar to your older self you are also a little different. Your consciousness will have to merge with the one in this body, but your genetics are a mix of Jureya and Tsunade. Basically you are their daughter. Kaiubi replied with a chuckle. So you made me my own daughter and daughter of that pervert Jureya. Why might I ask? Tsunade asked almost incredulous. The Kaiubi sighed. 1. As a means to an end, 2. We could not create a body without a lot of work. We have suppressed your body's memories of your childhood for the moment. Tsunade and Shizun have raised you for 14 years. We didn't even need to manipulate your past self to have a child with Ureya. It just seemed like the best option, if you remember correctly you did miscarry two years before the kid was born. Instead we allowed that child to live. Also you must rest so that your mind and her mind can merge and become one. 
And as for being a Jinchuriki you carry a kit within you made from two of my tails and my child, thus the reason why we have the link. We took a tail from my future self and one from my present self, and we used them to keep you alive as a baby. You have adequate chakra control and all your knowledge, you just woke up as yourself because we set a mental timer seal upon you so that you could meet up with the kit. Also you have the Mokuten gene active, and with that you can help control the kit so he does not go a little too wild. Not my idea as I would rather that little thing go away like the Sharingan, but enough chit chat, now go to bed and merge with your new self. As she dreamt she learned her given name was Yoshiko, according to Shizune it was to help her mother with her terrible luck. Not that it actually worked. Yoshiko accepted Tsunade as part of herself and agreed to merge their memories and personalities. She found that Yoshiko to be young and open-minded and did not mind being set to wed Naruto, especially as she learned about how handsome he would become. She also had no problem with sharing the boy. Yoshiko was a little bit disturbed that her father was Jiraiya, as her mother never let her near the man except for once. Yoshiko wanted to change that and get to know her father and his future apprentice. In the morning Yoshiko woke and knew whom she was and what she needed to do. With nearly 70 years of experience she knew that she was no longer a 50 plus year old woman, nor was she a 14 year old girl. She did know that she was in love though. Given all the knowledge from Tsunade's personality and extra chakra to control, she also felt the added reserves from the two-tailed demon sealed within her. She meditated the rest of the day to get a hold on her chakra and to try to reach the demon kit within her. She knew that she would have about a week until Naruto-kun would have to come by and train his little heart out, so she decided to watch and train herself. She knew all that an older Tsunade knew and all the training her mother had given her. She was deeply confused and relieved at the merger. She had an endless circular thought about her being her own mother in a strange mixed up way. But the Shinigami had given where it had taken before and she was not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. She just hoped that the messing with the time stream that the Shinigami and the Kaiubi had done didn't screw up things too much. She also knew she had to save both Naruto-kun and Haku-chan. After several hours she heard Naruto yelp in pain as he fell from his first attempt at tree climbing. She smirked as she thought of how part of her wanted to go and help heal him. She then heard a whisper of a voice within her. Hello is anybody there? Ishiko closed her eyes and found herself in a field with a giant fence, there was a fox the size of a horse with two tails on the other side of the fence. Who are you? Yoshiko asked. I am the inner demon you carry, your burden. You are my container no doubt. The fox replied. I know the Kaiubi is dangerous, but are you? Yoshiko asked. The fox smiled and produced a glint in its eye. We are always dangerous. You can only trust us if we give you our word. But father has stated that you are to be treated well and given chakra when needed. As I do not know the outside world so you will be my eyes and ears. I will enhance your senses to help protect both of us. You being a Mokuten user forces me to obey you only as much as you can keep me in line. Remember this girl we are a pair, but when you die I move on, like father will now. Tsunade looked shocked. Yes the Shinigami altered his seal so that when Naruto-kun dies so will you and it will release both of us. But that will only happen if he can reach his 20th birthday. You are special in the eyes of both the Shinigami and father. You while in your older form you were like a mother he never had and he loved you that way and more. It is hard to describe as the boy did not have any idea what love really was, at least not until the end. Now that we have merged yourself with your older version of your mother, this has helped you in many ways. First you now have access to several jutsu that you would not have had otherwise. Your chakra control has changed from poor to above average. It will take the rest of the week for us to get it to a level where you can do precise healing. As I do have some of my father's memories I would advise you to work on your chakra control first and then you should figure out a technique that will heal a girl suffering from a Chidori attack to the chest. Also we will be taking Haku-chan away from Naruto-kun to help keep from polluting the timeline too much. I will say this, though. Zabuza can live or die. That is up to you or the situation. Either way Haku-chan must survive and Gato must die. Naruto-kun must be entered into the Chunin exams and from there we can push to change how things happened. You must act as a sideline player for a while as will Haku-chan. When you return you can tell your mother about nothing that you know. I am sorry, but father was forceful that Suratobi be sent to the Shinigami, it will be his time to go. Ishiko's eyes watered as she knew her one-time sensei would have to die. Why do I have to have all these memories? Why does Suratobi sensei have to die? I feel like I know Naruto-kun but no I don't. You know him well enough and you will again fall in love with him. He is your mate after all and there is no way around it. Now, I will help you to deal with the heartache of the loss of his older self and you can start to learn to love him for yourself. The fox gently stated. Maybe we can get him to change into another color or tone down his outfit some. Is that why I have always had this image in the back of my mind of a blonde boy with whisker marks? 
Yashiko asked as she began to softly cry. The fox nodded its head. Yashiko broke the connection with the fox and opened her eyes. She found her face wet from tears that she wouldn't stop flowing. Why am I crying? Yashiko asked herself. As I said I am going to help you deal with the loss of the older Naruto-kun, we have a week to deal with it and then save his younger self and one of the people who is precious to him. By the way you can refer to me as Aki, Yashiko, formerly Tsunade and Yashiko. We are also dealing with the assimilation of over 50 years of experiences for your Tsunade half and about 14 years from yourself. This is what is needed. Aki replied gently. Why are you being nice to me, aren't you demon foxes supposed to be malevolent? Yashiko inquired. Only when angered and I'm still young so you do not have yet to worry about me double-crossing you yet. I figure it will take about 400 years for me to be ready to trick you. Aki replied with a chuckle. I would be dead by then. Yashiko stated. My point exactly. Yashiko heard the fox snicker. Now let's get to training. We need you to have expert chakra control, now make about 50 shadow clones and have them get to work on chakra control exercises such as climbing trees, spinning leaves, water walking, and any others that you can think of. Aki ordered. I know, also dismiss them in small groups so as not to over flood my mind with information. Yashiko replied mentally. But 50 Yashikos working in the forest and near the water on chakra control, the original worked on her kata for her tojutsu. The rest of the afternoon was spent doing the tojutsu kata while the clones worked on chakra control. She eventually quit and dismissed the clones. The evening meal was actually larger than she thought she should have eaten, but Aki assured her she needed a lot more food than a normal person to keep up her energy did. The next day she created an extra clone and sent it off to watch over Naruto-kun for her while she continued to work on her skills. Every night she would play the memories of Naruto-kun trying so hard to get the tree walking exercise down, she felt a mild blush cross her face at the memories and a warm feeling in her stomach. The rest of the week was the same routine as she came to look forward to getting the clone's memories of watching Naruto-kun. On the night of the fifth day she found Naruto lying exhausted on the ground in a patch of medicinal plants. Tomorrow is the morning isn't it Aki? Yashiko asked her tenant. Yes it is, now we will wait for Haku-chan to find him in the morning. Aki replied as Yashiko made a clone to watch over Naruto while she slept. The next morning she woke early and dismissed the clone just before Haku arrived. At first it looked like Haku would attack Naruto, but she then woke Naruto, they had a nice conversation about precious people. It ended with Haku proclaiming she was a boy and leaving just as Sasuke arrived. Ishiko pushed down her animosity toward Sasuke for at least for a little while as a right now Sasuke is Naruto's friend and teammate and their banter was more playful than it would later become. Ishiko woke the next day, she sent a clone to check on Naruto at the house and she herself went to the bridge to keep an eye on Haku to make sure she did not get hurt early. She arrived at the bridge to watch as Abusa had either scared off or knocked out all the people ready for work on the bridge. She hid and waited for Team 7 minus Naruto to arrive, it didn't take long. The fight began with Zabuza teasing Sasuke about being afraid, but Sasuke replied that he was excited. He then proceeded to destroy five of Zabuza's water clones. The fight then proceeded to fighting between Sasuke and Haku while Kakashi and Zabuza watched. The fight between Sasuke and Haku was rather one-sided as Haku showed her superior skills and mastery of her Keke Genkai. Naruto eventually showed up and proceeded to pull some very stupid maneuvers, but all in all he acquitted himself well for a genin against a chunin. Yashiko watched as Sasuke selflessly sacrificed himself to protect Naruto and in turn have Naruto release some of the Kaiubi's chakra in despair as he believed that Haku had killed Sasuke. He used it expertly as he pummeled Haku. Yashiko was worried that she might have to rush in and save her earlier than expected. Yashiko watched as Kakashi readied his lightning jutsu and was ready to hit Zabuza. Haku at that moment created an ice mirror and moved in front of Zabuza. Now Yashiko, go now. Aki yelled in her mind as Yashiko moved at top speed to catch Haku as Kakashi pulled his hand out of her chest. Yashiko watched as horror and fear swept across Naruto's face. Yashiko gently placed Haku on the ground, cut a large bundle of Haku's hair, placing it on her chest, and began to do a healing jutsu on Haku as everyone but Naruto and Sasuke looked on in shock. Sasuke was unconscious and Naruto had come running to see what had happened to Haku. Naruto slid on his knees to end up at Haku's before he turned to Yashiko. Can you heal him? Naruto asked with worry on his face. Ishiko nodded and blushed. I can with your help. Naruto looked confused. Come behind me and place your hands on my shoulders. Then channel chakra into your hands, I will be able to use your chakra to augment my own to do the healing, as I don't have a healing seal readied. Naruto complied as he got up and walked behind Yashiko. He placed his hands on her shoulders touching her shirt and began to channel chakra to his hands. His face became red. Like this? Naruto asked shyly. Ishiko shook her head. 
No, you must touch my skin for it to work, or we will just be wasting chakra. Naruto gulped and knelt down. He then placed his hands on the skin of her upper arms, as both of them blushed at the touch. Yes that's it, thank you blondie. Yashiko replied as she smirked. Sasuke started to stir in Sakura's grip. Sakura watched intently as Naruto had touched a new girl. Sakura's face contorted in anger. Naruto, you don't touch a girl like that. Naruto looked at Sakura with a worried look on his face, not sure if he should let go or continue to do what he was doing. He then noticed the wound on Haku begin to close, he also noticed the wrappings on Haku's chest. He averted his eyes as to make sure that Haku was not a girl and embarrassed the both of them. But Sakura I have to help. Naruto replied sadly. Naruto he is the enemy. And she should be helping Sasuke-kun instead. Sakura yelled her protest at Naruto. Shut up Pinky. Yashiko demanded. I am working here and he is helping while you should be watching the end of the bridge. Beto stood there with all of his thugs with surprised looks on their faces. How did you know we were here? Gato demanded then shook his head. It doesn't matter. Zabuza you failed me. Now I'm going to kill you and these worthless shinobi who stopped you. I will take the girls and take special pleasure in tormenting your young apprentice. Ishiko turned to Naruto who looked into her eyes. Hey kid, thanks for helping Haku. Can you spare a kunai? I want to take out the trash. Zabuza said as he tore the bandages on his mouth. He turned to Tazuna and smiled. Guess I am no longer after your life. Zabuza then turned back to Naruto and Yashiko. So kid you got that extra kunai? Naruto looked at Yashiko who nodded and spoke. You can remove one hand then return it, I only need a few more minutes to help her. Naruto smiled a real smile and moved his right hand to his pouch and pulled out a kunai, deftly throwing it to Zabuza who grabbed it in his mouth. As Zabuza ran to the group of thugs Naruto replaced his hands and pushed more chakra into Yashiko. Zabuza tore through the thugs on his way towards a terrified Gato. I will see you in hell. Because guy like you will be ruled by demons like me there. Zabuza exclaimed as he stabbed Gato in the throat, sending him off the bridge to die in the water. Zabuza turned to find that those he had not killed had cut off his escape route. Thanks kid I will remember this if you ever make to hell with me. Zabuza charged a group and used his feet to beat his way through the group to finally fall onto a weary Kakashi. Please take me to Haku, I want to see her before I die. He whispered to Kakashi whose eyes went wide and he just nodded as he pulled several weapons from Zabuza's back. Kakashi then picked up Zabuza and laid him next to Haku. Kakashi then looked at the sweating blonde girl. Can you save them both? Ishiko began to shake her head. I don't know. Just doing this is taking a lot out of me and Naruto isn't it? Yashiko looked at Naruto who was also sweating as he nodded his response. I will do what I can, but I need to stabilize this one first. If we have enough strength left we will work on him. But first we need to take care of them. Yashiko nodded towards the waiting thugs. Zabuza gently brushed Haku's face. Take care of Haku for me kid. Haku was more than a tool, Haku was like my child. Maybe I might get to go to heaven even with all that I have done. Please save Haku if nothing else. I know my life is forfeit. Tell Haku that I will try to watch over Zabuza stated as he breathed his last breath. Ishiko felt the tears run down her face as she continued to work on Haku. I will watch over Haku for you. Yashiko and Naruto both replied in unison as Naruto gently squeezed her shoulders as he continued to deliver chakra to her. Bakashi looked at his group and shook his head. These are long odds. I am nearly out of chakra and there are too many of them for me to kill myself. Naruto-kun, I have enough chakra left to finish this, please help your sensei or we'll all die. Yashiko asked as she looked deeply into his eyes. Naruto smiled and nodded. Wearily Naruto stood up and made a crossed finger hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. About 50 shadow clones appeared on the bridge and all drew a kunai. Kakashi shrugged his shoulders and made a ram hand sign clone jutsu. About 60 Kakashi appeared on the bridge. This caused the mercenaries to become worried for these exhausted shinobi to create over a hundred clones, this would make the fight almost one-sided in the shinobi's favor. Haku's breathing steadied as Yashiko began to falter. Suddenly a crossbow bolt hit the bridge at the feet of the mercenaries. Everyone turned to see Inari leading the whole village, all of them armed with something. You can either leave now or we can force you to leave. Inari shouted as the rest of the villagers rallied behind Inari. The mercenaries ran from the bridge in a panic. Yashiko began to wrap Haku under her robe to maintain her modesty. Kakashi walked over to Yashiko and looked at her. You seem familiar and can you help heal my student? Ishiko rocked back on her heels and shook her head. I can't help your Uchiha student at the moment I am just too tired and am nearly out of chakra. As for who I am, my name is Yashiko Senju. I have to finish treating the wounds on this one before I can work on your student. He should be fine, I do see a lot of senbon, but none of them are in vital areas. Remove them and patch him up, I will be by in a couple days to check on him. 
Yoshiko turned to Naruto and smiled warmly as she blushed. Thank you Naruto-kun, you were a great help. I will take care of your friend. You will see us again. I can assure you of that. What to do with Zabuza's body? Kakashi asked out loud as an idea suddenly came to him. Naruto you have burial detail. Bury Zabuza's body and bring me the head. It was nice to meet you Yoshiko Haim. Send your mother my warmest regards. Kakashi said as he smiled behind his mask. Naruto nodded his acknowledgement and made several shadow clones that grabs Ibuza's body and the giant sword. Yes, sensei. Naruto and his clones headed back towards the landing. Kakashi watched as Sakura gently removed the senbin from Sasuke. Yoshiko watched as Sakura took delight in tending to the small wounds all over the exhausted Ichiha. So Yoshiko Haim, what are you doing here in Wave? Kakashi asked nonchalantly. Yoshiko shrugged and then spoke. Nothing really, I just wanted to get away from the village, and this seemed like a nice spot, at least until I arrived. The economy is so depressed, but the bridge seemed like it will fix that. Akashi nodded but kept an eye on the young Senju. What brought you to this fight? Ishiko smiled. I felt the chakra spikes and headed to the bridge. I saw this person struck by your jutsu and saw the concern on Naruto-kun's face and had to act. I didn't see what headbands you wore, so I decided to help either side until I could figure out who was who. Akashi shook his head. That was a risky decision young lady. You could have been captured or killed or worse. You are just lucky it was Leaf Shinobi here not some other village. Ishiko blushed. I guess you're right. I will be more careful next time. You seem to have taken a liking to one of my students. Kakashi commented. Ishiko blushed and then stuttered. What do you mean? Kakashi I smiled. I am sure Naruto will be glad to know he has a following. If I may ask why are you not drawn like most of the other girls to Sasuke? Ishiko immediately frowned. He is in a chair and that is enough for me. Kakashi frowned but nodded in agreement. That is understandable. Well your two families founded Kanoha they did not always get along. I hope it isn't because of history. Ishiko put her hands on her hips. Look haddock -san, I do not find Sasuke Chiha attractive the least. I like blondes better. Oops she immediately covered her mouth with both hands and blushed profusely. Sakura having finished with patching up Sasuke walked over. What is so attractive about that baka? Ishiko shifted her hand so that she was biting on her right index fingernail. Well I like his face those whisker marks are just so cute. His eyes show so much depth, I could just swim in them. His smile is to die for. Yashiko nearly swooned as she talked. She is almost as bad as you and Ino when you both talk about your Sasuke-kun. Kakashi teased. Both Yashiko and Sakura blushed. So you learned medical jutsu from your mother? Kakashi asked as Yashiko nodded. Could you take some time and work with Sakura, here? Yashiko shook her head. Nope, not going to happen, I still have a lot to learn. I also have to get this one to a place where I can finish my healing work. Like I said I will be by in a couple days to look in on the Ichiha boy. Where are you staying by the way? Azuna spoke up. They are staying at my place, you are welcome to join us there if you like, and then you can look over the two of them, if needed. Ishiko gently picked up Haku as Kakashi picked up Sasuke. She followed Tazuna, Kakashi, and Sakura back to Tazuna's house. Kakashi attempted to put Sasuke in the same room as Haku, Yashiko adamantly refused, when asked why, her answer was. Boys and girls will not sleep in the same room. Kakashi's eyes went wide with the confirmation that Haku was a girl. Ishiko told Kakashi not to spread this information around, or he would regret it. Naruto came back none too happy. He and his clones had buried Zabuza and brought his head back in a cloth bag. Kakashi had then sealed it into a scroll and told Naruto to get cleaned up. Naruto grumbled about having to do all the grunt work, this caused Yoshiko to giggle and Sakura to hit him, for which Yoshiko slammed Sakura into a wall. Naruto was stunned for two reasons, one a girl was actually defending him from Sakura, and two she was as cute if not cuter than Sakura. Naruto thought to investigate this further after he cleaned up. Naruto entered the bathroom and disrobed to his boxers, he then washed his hands and head. He then put his clothes in the sink and cleaned them. He pulled a sewing kit out of his pack and began to repair his clothes when the door opened and Yoshiko entered. She turned and turned bright red as she looked Naruto directly in the face, her eyes traveled down his body, and she was both embarrassed and angry. Naruto was, as her knowledge of human anatomy told her, nearly emaciated and near starving. She saw muscles, but she saw bones everywhere, where there should be at least some fat Naruto had none. His face hid his starvation well. Yoshiko bowed and began an apology. I am sorry I did not realize you were in this bathroom. Forgive my staring. If you will excuse me I will use the other bathroom. She also noted that he was repairing his outfit. She knew he should have a spare while out on a mission. Either he didn't own one or he failed to bring an extra. Naruto noticed her eyes they did not hold the hatred that others showed him. 
while he was embarrassed to be caught with his pants down, literally, he was happy to find someone else who did not hate him. His sad look changed to a big smile. That is okay, sorry for my state of undress, let me put my clothes back on, and you can use this bathroom. Ishiko turned and shook her head. No, that is alright I will use the other one, you apparently did not bring another outfit and have to repair this one. This room should have afforded you privacy. I'm sorry I barged in. Naruto had put on his pants and his shirt. He put his hand on Yoshiko's shoulder and she turned around to look directly into his eyes. I am sorry for hogging this room. Naruto's eyes looked down then back, she saw gratefulness in his eyes. Thank you for saving Haku-chan. Ishiko wore an expression of surprise and stuttered out. How did you know? Naruto smiled and winked at her. I'm not going to tell you, you'll think I am a pervert and now the bathroom is yours. Naruto said as he passed her and left the room. Ishiko immediately heard Sakura hit Naruto and yell at him. You are not supposed to go into the bathroom when a girl is in there. Geez, Sakura, I was in there first and nothing happened. Naruto snidely replied as she heard his being hit again. Ishiko was getting angry with the pink banshee for abusing her Naruto-kun. I swear I am going to kill her after the Chunin exams. Yoshiko thought to herself. The rest of the night was filled with Naruto annoying Sakura much to Yoshiko's delight. Kakashi seemed to have an idea in his mind but kept his nose in his book. The next week saw the finishing of the bridge, Naruto was a great help in that his shadow clones did most of the grunt work. Haku and Sasuke were healed for the most part. Haku still had more work to be done on her, but Yoshiko made sure that she got plenty of rest and was healing properly. Yoshiko and Haku became fast friends and would talk about Naruto when no one else was around. Haku dropped the boy persona when it was just herself and Yoshiko. Yoshiko explained that Kanoha actually liked bloodlines, but she would have to be careful not to let the council try to marry her off to someone. Haku admitted that she was attracted to Naruto, but was scared of what she saw when they fought. Ishiko helped Haku through the pain of losing Zabuza as best as she could. Haku wanted to get to know Naruto better, but Yoshiko advised her to wait until after Naruto had grown a little, she would like the results she was sure of it. Yoshiko also told Haku about Naruto's secret to her. Haku at first was only surprised, then she accepted that Naruto has had a hard life like she did and would do what she could to help make his life better. Yoshiko told Haku that was also her goal and that they both with the help of others could make Naruto the happiest person alive. Haku blushed at the possible revelations that Yoshiko was discussing. The six left wave on a happy note, Haku had accepted Zabuza's death and made Naruto one of her precious people. Yoshiko left a shadow clone to see what they were going to name the bridge to make sure that there was not too much pollution in the time stream. The people voted to name the bridge, the Great Naruto Bridge. Yoshiko was pleased to learn of what they named the bridge after Naruto. Sakura spent the whole trip trying to make sure that Yoshiko didn't want to take Sasuke away from her. Sasuke for his part tried to stay close to her, his conversations were very droll and mostly about himself. Yoshiko just rolled her eyes, giggled and looked at Haku. Sasuke thought he might be making headway with the heir to the Senju clan, boy was he wrong. When they finally got to the village Naruto had become quiet not sure what was going on with Haku and Yoshiko, both kept on looking at him funny and blushing. Sakura had become very loud in her attempt to get Sasuke's attention. Sasuke kept on trying to get closer to Yoshiko. Takashi was contemplating what he was going to do with the two new girls, both were skilled, had bloodlines, but both seemed to hate Sasuke and both girls seemed to like Naruto. Kakashi just sighed as they entered the village. Haku was wide-eyed as they headed towards the Hokage's tower. Naruto ignored the glares as Haku and Yoshiko both put their hands on Naruto's shoulders. Naruto gently smiled back to the girls. All six entered the Hokage's office and saw the Hokage sitting at his chair happily smoking. So Team 7 how did your mission go? Oh hello Yoshiko-chan, and who is your friend? The Hokage greeted the group. Yoshiko bowed and smiled at Saratobi. This is Haku, someone I met in the Land of Waves. She was working with Zabuza Mamichi. Kakashi stated as the rest of Team 7's jaws hit the floor. Yoshiko, Naruto and Haku all shot Kakashi a very angry look. Sasuke then leered longingly at Haku. Naruto pointed at Kakashi and could not say a word. I suggest we put her up with Sasuke in the Ichiha compound. Ishiko continued to glare at Kakashi. She will stay be staying with me at the Senju compound. I do not trust the Ichiha to leave her alone. I would also ask that the Hokage keep her status as a female a private matter. She is under my family's protection. Why would that be? Saratobi inquired. Because she has an ice bloodline trait. Kakashi noted as Saratobi raised an eyebrow. The council will want to know about her ability. Ishiko was now livid as was Haku. I wish for my abilities to remain my own. If they are spread around the village I will give you ascendant castration. Then freeze your testicles off. Do I make myself clear? Haku threatened as Kakashi began to sweat. 
She then looked directly at the Hokage. That goes for you too, old man. I was promised protection from both Ishiko-chan and Naruto-kun. The Hokage looked a little scared and also confused. Okay let's start from the beginning. First I want to collect the bounty for Zabuza Mamichi, the demon of the mist. Kakashi stated as he unsealed the head from a scroll. Haku's eyes went wide. Oh, and by the way Naruto took the head off the body. Haku looked worriedly at Naruto whose face was downcast. Yes and say, I did take the head off Abusa's body on your orders. I am sorry Haku-chan. Naruto sounded very sincere. Sasuke just made a sound that showed his disgust at Naruto's sentimental attitude towards Haku. Ch. Haku gave an angry look at Sasuke and then turned her face to Naruto, giving him a kind but hurt smile. Yoshiko put her hand on Haku's shoulder to give her comfort. You did good Naruto it was a nice clean cut, I do not understand why you are having problems Haku-chan. Saratobi commented with concern. Zabuza was precious to Haku, Jiji. Naruto commented to Saratobi. He was an evil and cruel man. Sakura commented loudly. The room suddenly became cold. Naruto stood in front of Haku. He then placed his hands upon her shoulders and shook his head. The fire in Haku's eyes softened as she nodded. Yes Abusa Sen was precious to me. Thankfully I have found more that are precious to me, to replace what was lost. Haku stated as she looked fondly from Naruto and Yoshiko. Okay, what happened on the mission and what did Zabuza Mamachi have to do with it? Saratobi asked pointedly. Naruto began to excitedly explain the tale of the mission. Kakashi stopped him before he got to the point of Naruto saving him from the water prison that Kakashi was trapped in. Kakashi glossed over Naruto's achievements and made a point of showing Sasuke's achievements during the mission. He said teamwork played an important role. Naruto looked dejected at his being shafted by his sensei over what he felt were good points in the mission. Kakashi eventually said he would then turn in his report in the morning and that the team was dismissed. Team 7 left the room as Yoshiko and Haku stayed in the office. So what do I owe the honor of you two sticking around after the team has given its report? Saratobi asked. Well, Hokage-sama. There are a few things I would like to report. Yoshiko stated with a frown. Ishiko was rather vocal about what she reported as she left very little out of her report about all she had seen during the wave mission, this shocked and surprised Haku and Saratobi. Damn it Hokage-sama. That Haruno girl is less than useless as she is right now, and the Ichiha is even worse as he would abandon his team just to prove a point. He showed some progress near the end of the mission, but he did not show that he truly understood teamwork. Naruto-kun was left to work on his own and used as a tool to push Sasuke to achieve better. All they apparently know right now is the tree climbing exercise. I know that Sasuke at least knows some jutsus. Naruto knows only Shadow Clone, and I don't think he fully understands what is involved with it. Sakura is useless, as she has pathetic chakra reserves, but excellent control and absolutely no jutsu, other than the Academy 3. Yoshiko ranted. Tsuritobi pondered what he was being told. So you are telling me that Kakashi is purposely helping only one of his genin rather than the whole team? Yoshiko shook her head. Not in so much as he is abandoning the team to only do chakra focusing and teamwork exercises. Sakura needs the most work, and then Naruto-kun also needs some help. I would say he needs a mentor or become an apprentice to someone. Tsuritobi chuckled at her comments. And who would you suggest, Jiraiya of the Sanin? Ishiko nodded with a huge smirk. Exactly the man for the job, as he and Naruto-kun share the same hard head, or at least it is what mom told me about Jiraiya-sama. Both learn by doing. But Naruto was the last in his class. What makes you so interested in a boy like him? Saratobi inquired. He reminds me of the Yandame, he like mother and I are some of the few blondes here in the village. He has the will not to give up no matter what. He has a very kind heart. Also I know there has to be a reason you put him on Kakashi's team. From what I heard there was another that you were going to put on his team. Yoshiko commented. Saratobi eyed the girl as if he was beginning to suspect something was amiss with the Senju air. You are stating I would play favorites and place a boy who looks like the Yandame with the Yandame student. What else would it be? Team 10 is a capture team, and Team 8 is a scout team. I would figure that Team 7 would be an assault team, but it isn't, sure you have Sasuke Chiha with his Sharingan, fire jutsu and fighting style, but Sakura Hirano, bookworm of her class and Naruto Uzumaki the dead last of his class on that same team. Let's take a look at Naruto's skills, Shadow Clone is a scouting and information gathering jutsu, he could also use it as an extraction jutsu by filling the area with clones while he and his team make good their escape. His transformation is an actual transformation instead of a jinjutsu, another infiltration skill. The sexy jutsu a variation upon his transformation jutsu is yet another infiltration skill. His speed is nearer better than Chunin level. His evasion skills are at times better than Anbu, even with his choice of wardrobe. This comment brought a chuckle to both Haku and Siratobi. 
So there are things you want to add about the mission that they went on with Tazuna-san. Saratobi deflected the point of how he made up the squads. There is more here than she is saying, I am sure of it. Ishiko took a deep breath and slammed her hand down on Saratobi's desk, leaving an indentation of her fist. Kakashi glossed over the actual mission, giving the Ichiha boy more credit than he deserved and didn't give enough to Naruto-kun. I must watch out for this girl she is too much like her mother in a lot of ways. That hole in my desk could have been my stomach. Saratobi thought to himself. Okay, please fill me in on what you think that Kakashi left out. Aku spoke up this time. Well during the first encounter, Naruto-kun fought Zabuza sama's water clone to a standstill. He also devised of a plan that freed Kakashi-san from Zabuza sama's water prison jutsu. The Ichiha boy had a part to plan but did not did not come up with the idea or its implementation. On the bridge I was able to incapacitate Ichiha-san, while Naruto-kun was able to call forth a great power and stop me. The Haruno girl was left to defend the client while Kakashi-san took Zabuza sama and the Ichiha boy fought me. Naruto-kun surprised me just as I was about to kill the Ichiha boy. He also surprised everyone when he snuck into my crystal ice prison. No one had noticed until the Ichiha boy yelled at him and brought all attention to him. Had he just left with Naruto-kun they could have escaped unnoticed. While well, Naruto-kun is loud he is also very stealthy when he needs to be. I will go over Kakashi's report carefully and see if these points you have raised are in the report. If not I will call you both back to help fill in the blanks for me. I will also keep your Keke Genkai under wraps for now. So will you be staying at the Senju estate? Saratobi asked. Yes we're going to stay there, as Yoshiko-sama has offered me one of the spare bedrooms. Haku explained. Would you care to become a shinobi of the leaf? I can offer you a genin spot in one of my squads that is short a person. Saratobi offered. If it is alright with a hokage, I would prefer to not become a shinobi at this time. I am afraid your counsel will force me into a marriage with a man I do not care for. I'm also still grieving for Zabuza-sama, and it would not be appropriate at this time. I thank you for your offer, but would like to keep your offer on hold if I can. I have a few things to settle first. Ishiko-chan has been gracious to offer a home for me in the Senju estate. Haku replied. Very well then, you will be offered citizenship in a few weeks as you pass probation with Yoshiko as your sponsor. I will also keep your bloodline secret as long as I can. I hope you have a good day ladies. Saratobi stated with a smile. Ishiko took Haku to the garment district to purchase both male and female clothes for her. They made it look like the female clothes were for Yoshiko and the male clothes were for Haku. They later entered the Senju house. Yoshiko began to fix lunch when there was a knock on the door. Yoshiko answered the door to find a Chunin asking for Yoshiko and Haku to come to council chambers in an hour. Yoshiko smelled a rat but didn't want to worry Haku too much. The girls ate a quick lunch and then prepared to meet with the Kanoha council. Yoshiko and Haku both wore formal wear. Yoshiko wore a green Komen kimono, while Haku wore a plain dark blue kimono in the style of males. Yoshiko was not happy, not happy at all. What do those old bats on the council want? Yoshiko stated bluntly. Haku looked confused at Yoshiko. Why would you not show respect for the village council? Yoshiko sighed. They keep on trying to get me to marry this person or that person because I am the last of the Senju clan. I think they might try to pull the same thing with you. Yoshiko smiled as sly grin crossed her face. Haku-chan I have a question for you. Haku looked intently at Yoshiko. Yes, Yoshiko-chan, what is your question? What are your feelings towards Naruto-kun? Yoshiko inquired. Haku blushed at the question. To be honest, I see a lot of potential in him that I really do like. I also noticed the hurt and pain behind his eyes. I feel there is a connection between us, but I am not sure how to describe it. He has compassion, more so than you would expect from a shinobi. His heart is pure, that being one of his most endearing attributes. You described him but not your feelings for him. I know that I am in love with the boy, I think I know others that may be too. Yoshiko admitted with a blush. I do feel an attraction, but I feel he is still too young for romantic attachments. When he is older I would like to pursue one with him if I can. Haku admitted with a smile and a deep blush. Yoshiko smiled broadly. I have an idea. Haku nodded. If the council attempts to force us to marry and your secret has gotten out, we can push back and have them arrange a marriage for both of us to Naruto-kun. How do you feel about that? Yoshiko proposed. Haku thought for a minute. I think that is a good idea and I would like that. He is kind and would be at least a good husband and that way we could remain friends and we can help Naruto-kun. I can tell he is very lonely and it would be a way to repay Naruto-kun. Haku replied with a smile. Both girls entered the Hokage's tower and made their way to the council chambers. Yoshiko's worries came to a full head when she looked at the frustrated and angry look on Suratobi's face. Greeting Hokage-sama, the council has summoned both of us. May we inquire what this is about? 
Yashiko asked politely. Tsuritobi gave the girls a sad smile. Welcome Yashiko-chan and Haku. The council would like to speak with the both of you. I think I know what they want, but I am not sure so I am going to let them speak to you. But please sit and listen to what they have to say. Ishiko and Haku sat in two empty chairs near Suratobi at the large conference table. Hamura coughed to clear his voice. It is good to see you Yashiko Haim. I hope your mother is doing well. Ishiko pushed down her anger. It is an honor to meet with the esteemed members of the Kanoha Council, and as for my mother, I believe she is doing fine, either that or she is losing a ton of money, and in that case, she is as happy as a clam. Yashiko's comment caused those that knew Tsune to chuckle. Being that as it is. It has come to our attention that you turned down Sasuke Chiha's advances. Am I correct in what I heard? Hamura asked. Ishiko smiled. Yep, I turned him down and stuck a kunai into it, now I am hoping it is deader than a doornail, and no healing jutsu will bring it back if I can help it. Again Yashiko's antics caused several in the room to chuckle. Why would you do that? He is the last of the Achiha and you are the last of the Senju. A merger of the founding clans would beneficial to the village. Hamura stated. Beneficial, for whom, might I ask? I do not like the Achiha, and I especially do not like Sasuke. My family dwindled while theirs prospered and multiplied. My family fraught while theirs took sparing missions to increase their store of jutsu and then took cushy positions in the police force. Yashiko stated as she glared at Hamura. Why do you have this animosity towards Sasuke Achiha? What has he ever done to you? Hamura asked. Where do I start? He killed the man I loved, the woman that carried his child, betrayed the village. I could continue, but that was another time. Yashiko thought to herself. I just don't like him and another has caught my eye. Hamura smiled. I am glad you are taking your duty as heir properly. Would you like to share with the council who this lucky young man is? Nope. Yashiko replied with a smirk that caused Saratobi to smirk also. Very well then. It has also been brought to our attention that your guest here has a bloodline trait and is actually a young girl, not the boy she is attempting to convince us she might be. Kaharu stated, this caused several gasps in the council chambers. I would like to know where you got this information. Haku questioned. We will not divulge our sources. Do you admit to both having a keke genkai and to being female? Kaharu asked. I admit to both. Haku stated as her face contorted in anger. Kaharu nodded. Very well, then it will be decided who you will have an arranged marriage to, so that you can help provide this village with children with your bloodline. What? Haku demanded as she slammed her hand down on the table. Why child? You have no say in this. Kaharu stated. The room's temperature dropped several degrees in seconds as Haku stood facing the council. First thing, you do not dictate who I will or will not marry. Second thing, I am not a member of your village and am currently only guest, if you are planning to abduct me and then have me raped, I will kill each and every one of you right here and now. Afterwards I will leave this village. I have never been a true shinobi and thus have never given my oath to a village. I understand that this village adores Keke Genkai, but the village council forcing me a girl with no family into a family without her consent and then telling me that I have no say the matter for me is grounds for me to kill you where you stand. Haku threatened. The ashy smiled and loudly shifted his chair away from Kaharu. You young lady could teach my eldest a thing or two. Kaharu-san, I believe you have bitten off more than you can chew. Indeed, Haku-chan is under Senju protection. Thus an attack on her is an attack on the family of the first and second Hokages, along with my mother, Tsunade. Do you wish to continue treading upon these waters? Yashiko threatened. Silence child, you will respect your elders. Kaharu yelled. Ishiko stood and looked the older woman directly into the eyes. You don't scare me you old hag. This girl came into this village after a tragic loss and now you want to sell her off to the highest bidding clan to strengthen the village without any concern for her welfare. What type of evil bastards are you? Yashiko questioned. We are looking out for the child's best interests. Kahar retorted. Really? And just who did you have in mind, maybe a certain Achiha team? Yashiko replied with much venom. Yes, actually that person came to mind along with a couple others. Kahara replied in a kindly elderly manner. Ishiko sighed and looked at Haku who shook her head. I have also chosen someone to follow. Kahara smiled warmly. Then we are not worried about you having children soon. Who may I ask is the lucky man? Haku shook her head. Children may be in the future, but I will not have them for a few years now. As for whom my interests lie. I'm not at liberty to reveal who it is. Why do you not share child? Kahara inquired. Because to me, you appear to be pompous old fools trying to run others' lives without any regard for the lives you're attempting to ruin. Haku retorted. Haku looked angrily at Saratobi who just shook his head and smirked. Are we done being humiliated here? Haku turned to leave and grabbed Yashiko's hand in an attempt to leave the room. Two Anbu appeared in front of the door. 
So I am a prisoner here. If news of this were to get out to the other elemental countries, it would not be good for your village. The Haru stood and walked towards the teen girls. You see, you both possess powerful Keke Genkai, and the village just wants to see them continued. So we take your advice and hope we end up with a man who will care for us, right? Yoshiko asked angrily. Yes that is it. Kaharu stated as she neared the girls. Mother will hear about this, and I assure you that she will just have another thing to be angry at the village for. You killed her family with no regard for what you were doing. Yoshiko retorted. We were at war. Kaharu responded in defense. Then why did most of the Senju die during the war and the Ichiha flourished? Yoshiko inquired. That is because they have a powerful bloodline. Kahara replied with a smile. No, it is because they did not have to take the hard missions, they remained here at home for the most part. They are just thieves, they steal when it suits them. Now you want to offer us to their sacrificial altar. We refuse. Do I need to call my mother? I can you know, I did sign the summoning contract. That is the only reason I was able to come and live in the village, instead of continue my travels with her. Yoshiko commented as her fist went through the table. The Haru sighed as she finally reached the girls. She reached out her arm to touch Haku, only to find that Haku's arm was encased in ice. Don't you dare touch me you old hag. Let us go now. Haku demanded. Ishiko turned to Suratobi. Hokujama, I do not appreciate the council attempting to abduct us and forcibly rape us. Suratobi was shocked by the comment. Well they are not raping you, yet. The part was under his breath. What do you call being forced to have intercourse with a male against our will? Yoshiko pointed out. Well they have not forced either of you into a marriage contract. Saratobi retorted. Okajama, bearing children with a man we do not want and before we are ready is rape in my book. Yoshiko stated bluntly. I see your point, Kaharu-chan you are hereby reprimanded for insulting the Senju clan heir and her honored guest. What do you have to say for yourself? Saratobi asked. The Haru bowed her head. My apologies to both Yoshiko-chan and Haku-chan for my indiscretion, please forgive me. Kaharu stated as she gave the bare minimum respect to Yoshiko's clan. Yoshiko's fiery gaze bore down upon Kaharu. You are forgiven, but please don't let it happen again. Yoshiko turned to see the Anbu gone from the door. Haku and Yoshiko beat a hasty retreat from the room as shouts began to erupt from the closed door. The girls left the tower to find Sasuke waiting for them with a smirk on his face. So are you ready to move to the Ichiha complex? Sasuke asked with his eyes closed. Thus he missed the angry looks from both Yoshiko and Haku. He also missed seeing the pair of fists that hit him and sent him into a close building. Bastard. Yoshiko yelled while her fist was still where Sasuke used to be standing. Now shall we go home and discuss what we are going to do for the next three weeks. Haku nodded agreement as they left and Sasuke slowly extracted himself from the wall. The next three weeks were spent both training and following a certain blonde. There was also an additional member added to the Senju household, Aisuribi. She had come to the village stating that she needed healing from the legendary Sanin. The guards directed her to the hospital, but Yoshiko and Haku intercepted her before she arrived at the hospital. Ishiko took Isaribi aside to discuss the fact that Haku was the other individual that the fox had mentioned. Isaribi was happy to meet Haku, and the three girls became fast friends. Yoshiko sent a message to Xion with a quick explanation about what was going on. The return message stated that she would be ready when they called upon her. She also was still mourning the loss of her future child. Xion also offered to purify Yoshiko and Naruto at the same time, similar to what she had done before. At the end of the third week the Chunin exams had hit the village. Yoshiko and Haku had been asked to sit in on the second part of the exam to help the medics with dealing with the injured from the test and Isaribi had come along to watch with the two other girls. Inada had not seemed to have yet assimilated her older self as of yet, so they kept her at a distance, not wanting to affect how things played out. The tests continued as they had before with Sasuke beating the traitor Yoroi. Shino easily defeated Zaku. Kenkuro defeated Tsurugi. Sakura and Ino knocked each other out. Tamari beat Tintin. Shikamaru beat Kin. Naruto beat Kiba, and Hinata showed her concern for him by giving him a small jar of healing bomb yet again. Hinata lost badly to Niji, who earning the ire of Naruto, Yoshiko, Haku, and Isaribi. Naruto had been so moved during the match that he basically took a blood oath to avenge Hinata. Yoshiko was able to repair more damage than the medics had before, and Yoshiko figured she would recover faster this time. Gara devastated Lee, but Yoshiko was able to assist Lee more quickly than last time. She was able to make sure his injuries were not as severe. And in the final match Dosu knocked Joji for a loop. But the selection of opponents for the third round, the intrepid female trio kept an eye on Naruto from a distance. Yoshiko also kept an eye on both Lee and Hinata at the hospital. Kurinai encountered the trio on their way home from watching Naruto chasing Jiraiya and tricking him into training Naruto. 
Ishiko Haim, may I have a word with you? Kurinai asked as Ishiko nodded, Haku and Isoribi both headed back to the Senju complex. What can I do for you Kurinai-san? Yashiko responded. I would like to thank you for your help with Hinata-chan. She is like a daughter to me. Kurinai explained. It was my pleasure. I just hope Naruto-kun can remove that stick that is up Niji's butt. Yashiko exclaimed. Kurinai chuckled. I also have to ask you what your intentions are towards Naruto. I have watched you three follow him on several occasions. Ishiko blushed. I already know that Hinata-san likes Naruto-kun. I was just waiting for a time where I could discuss it with Hinata-san. I know she is incurably shy. I assure you I will not move on Naruto-kun without talking with Hinata-san. She could even join us in following Naruto-kun. It is great for increasing stealth and stamina when trying to keep up with him. At times he can push your stamina to its limits. Then I am to understand that the heir to both the Hayuga and the Senju both are after the same kid. Kurinai asked with a slight smile. Ishiko nodded with a large smile. Yep, you got it. Heck if we actually catch him we might as well share. He does know the shadow clone jutsu, by the way. Kurinai blushed at the implications of Yoshiko's statement. You are already planning a life with him. He is only 12. So, I am only 14 as is Haku-chan, Isoribi-chan and Hinata-chan are both also 12. I say we can share. If we also split the bills he will not go broke taking all of us out on dates. Yoshiko said with a smirk. Kurinai's jaw dropped. Here the heir to the Senju clan had just expressed the same desire to be with Naruto that Hinata had also implied her affection toward the blonde several months earlier. If you girls actually do catch him what do you plan on doing? Kurinai asked not sure if she wanted to know the answer. Let me think Yoshiko took a thinking pose. Well, for the first thing I want Naruto-kun to help me rebuild the Senju clan. Yoshiko smirked as Kurinai's jaw again dropped. Just kidding, that is for much later. I know for sure that Haku-chan and Isoribi-chan both want to help Naruto-kun re-establish the Uzumaki clan. With Naruto-kun at the head of both clans, we could help make sure he became the Hokage. With Hinata-chan we would then have the Hayuga backing him also. Yoshiko happily answered. Kurinai was surprised at the thought-out ending that Yoshiko had come up with. When are you girls going to pursue Naruto? Yoshiko smirked. Who says we are not pursuing him now? When Kurinai's jaw again dropped Yoshiko laughed. We have agreed not to bother Naruto-kun until after the Chunin exams. If Hinata-chan wishes to pursue him also we welcome her. Kurinai-san, we are not rabid fangirls like those that pursue the Acha. We admire and deeply respect Naruto-kun for what he is and what he stands for. You can rest easy for Hinata-chan because I intend to go ask for my mother's permission to pursue Naruto-kun after the Chunin exams. I also have to have a discussion with a certain pervert. Yoshiko looked a little annoyed at that subject. Kurinai looked at Yoshiko and scrutinized her answers. Which pervert are you referring to? Ureya, of course, I have a personal matter to discuss with that old fart, but it can wait until he is done training Naruto-kun. I would also like to ask you a favor if I could. Yoshiko pose turned to desperation. I am afraid the council will try to make it so that Naruto-kun can't marry anyone. This would devastate our entire group. Can you talk to the Hokage-sama about making sure the council does not pull a fast one on Naruto-kun? I am also worried that they may also not allow him to become Chunin, even if he turns out to be qualified. I would marry him no matter what even if I had to drag him off to the fire daimyo myself to do the ceremony. Yoshiko stated with a smile. You really do like him that much? Kurinai honesty asked. Yes and more. Yoshiko insisted with a blush. Then why are you willing to share him? Kurinai interrogated. Naruto-kun is special he also needs more attention than I am able to give. I have observed over time that he needs connections and I want to give him one with me, as do the other girls. I do not want to deny those that have genuine feelings to be with him. I have also observed how he has been treated and I am appalled by it. The way they treat him is like he either has the plague or he has done something unforgivable and that is just not right. He is bright, cheery and has a great attitude. There is also more to him than meets the eye. Yoshiko stated almost as if she knew something that others might not. Kurinai put up her hands in surrender. Okay, okay, you win. I will talk to the Hokage about what the council might do. Do you want me to talk to Hinata-chan? No, she has seen us. She will either come to us on her own or end up competing with us. Either way it is a win-win for all of us. I do think she will eventually come to us and we can then talk about our mutual affection towards a certain blonde. If she is willing to share then there is no problem. Heck it might even help her with her confidence. Yoshiko remarked. Kurinai bowed her head. As you wish Yoshiko Haim, I will talk to the Hokage about Naruto and leave the matter of Hinata-chan up to you. Kurinai left in a swirl of leaves. Ishiko continued home and opened the gate to find Danzu standing at her front door. She began to grimace. Danzu-san, to what do I owe the pleasure? 
you will refer to me as Sama when addressing me. Denzu stated. No, mom won't do it so I won't. Yashiko refuted. So what do you want? Anzu looked at her with his unbandaged eye. I find it odd the two most eligible females in Kanoha under the same roof and neither is pursuing the most eligible bachelor. I have come on behalf of Sasuke Chiha to ask for your hand in marriage. He has already sent the request on to the fire daimyo. Here is our one word answer no. Haku stated as she opened the door. Let me make this easy for you Danzu Sama, no, hell no, no way in hell am I going to marry that brat, Sasuke Chiha. If the Senju and the Achiha ever join it will not be in my generation. If Sasuke finds a willing victim to produce his offspring then they may try to court my children, but until then he will not have me or my clan. Yashiko declared. Yes he didn't get it when we punched him into the store wall the first time. Either that or he likes to be abused. Haku teased. Maybe if I join his fan club he will leave me alone. Yashiko teased. Nah he would expect you to take his offer then. Haku rebutted with a chuckle. It would be a great thing for the village to have the two founding families become one. And if they could produce a dual bloodline then it would be all the better. Danzu declared. Get out of here before I use your cane to break your good arm and leg. Yashiko warned. Danzu lowered his head and walked away as he shook his head. So what are you going to do about the letter to the daimyo? Haku asked as the both entered the spacious home. Ishiko grinned similar to Naruto when he was up to something. I already sent a letter to him stating that if the Ichiha attempted to force a marriage with either of us, I would start a clan war and kill Sasuke. Ouch, you know how to hit him where it hurts. You know you would have help in the war, right? Haku inquired. I was counting on both of you to help me smear him across the mountain. We would take turns. Yashiko smirked. I would also have a secondary plan if the daimyo agreed with the council and Sasuke team. Aisuribi entered the room with a grin on her face. And what would that be Haim? Sorry can't tell, it's an S-rank secret. Anyway I hope Hanada-chan gives her inspirational speech to Naruto-kun at the end of the month. It would be bad if Niji were to actually beat him. Yashiko contemplated as she sat down on the couch. After dinner Haku went up to bed, but Yashiko and Aisuribi both stayed downstairs and talked. So why do you get the new body? Aisuribi asked. Ishiko smiled. Well how would it look if a 50 year old woman came back to a village she said she would never return to just to shack up with a 12 year old. Aisuribi cringed at the thought. You do have a point. But that isn't your body is it? Ishiko pondered the question for a moment. Yes and no. I am both Ishiko and Tsunade from our original timeline Yashiko was the child I had miscarried during that timeline. Aisuribi looked apologetically at Yashiko. Sorry. I do know that my birth did straighten out mom a little. She is still the same enough that if she meets him the reaction will be the same. We just need to keep things going as they are. My worry is that Naruto-kun will actually die this time when he goes up against Kabuto. Thus the reason we are leaving him alone for now. Yashiko then grinned again. We get him when he gets back. Aisuribi's face turned bright red. No, not that way, we are still too young. How is your training going? Akuchan has got me up to speed with basic jutsu and the weapons. I am still having a hard time with the studies, sorry. Aisuribi responded. I am not even sure we want to become shinobi. Heck we could have Naruto-kun retire and have him hit all the gambling halls, cleaning them all out. Yashiko jested. What about Akatsuki? Not a problem until he comes back from his training trip with Jiraiya. We also want to make sure that he befriends Gara of the desert. We might also want to contact the Fuuma clan and attempt to sway Sasum to bring the Fuuma clan here. Yashiko commented. Do we have to? That will take months more for us to wait for Naruto-kun. Aisuribi complained. I don't like it myself, according to Naruto-kun and Sakura team, Naruto-kun nearly died on that mission too. I am not sure how I would like for us to deal with it. If we let Sasuke go and work on patching him up after he returns from that mission, he should be truly ready for some companionship then. Also there are several missions I do want him to go on. The and Snow both need to happen, so we have stronger allies. We could help him on the mission to the land of vegetables. We are training, but I don't think mom wants me to become a shinobi. Yashiko stated. Do we have to share him with Sasum? What about Haruna from Vegetables? How many women will we have to share him with? Aisuribi again whined. Yashiko sighed. Okay we can all confront him after he gets back from going to the land of rice. Then we will tear down Sakura's hold upon him. Okay let me get this clear. We have you, Haku, Hinata, Yakumo, Shion and me for starters, that makes six. We might add Sasum, Haruna, Amaru and possibly Koyuki. Am I missing anybody? Aisuribi stated as her head began to spin. Ishiko grinned. Well if he ends up with that many women I am sure Anko would want to join in. Shizun might not be too bad as long as mother doesn't want to give me a sibling with our future husband. That could make things difficult. 
Yashiko replied as her head also began to hurt. Oh and what if the pink banshee wants to join because her precious Asuka has left? Isaribi exclaimed with a deep sigh. Yashiko then beamed. Then I initiate Operation Naruto Gala Marriage Round Robin. As first wife I decide who he can marry and who he can't. Aku appeared next to the girls, this caused them both to jump. What is this you have been talking about marriage and other women? Ishiko sighed. Okay since you are part of this whole wanting to be special to Naruto-kun, in for a shoe in for a ryo. There are a few things we need to tell you. Aku looked shrewdly at the other girls. Okay. First, what we are about to tell you is the truth. Yashiko paused as she waited for Haku to acknowledge her point, to which Haku nodded. We are partially from an alternate future. Haku's face became skewered and contorted. That is a new one. Now we're getting to the confusing part. Yashiko again waited for Haku to nod acknowledgement. Both Isoribi and I have merged spirits. I know I am going to regret this, but what does that mean? Haku questioned. Let me tell you a story. Yashiko began as Haku nodded. There was a blonde-haired boy who traveled to the wave country and met a couple of people he found to be special to him. One was named Haku the other was named Zabuza. I'm following so far, but I already know this story. Haku stated. No, you don't. Haku, in my spirits past you and Zabuza died at the bridge. I was also never born at least not in this body, it was never born, and it was miscarried over 14 years ago. Haku looked shocked as Yoshiko continued. Naruto was a class A idiot, a lovable one but an idiot. That part of my spirit is, was Tsunade Senju, my current mother. Naruto had convinced me to come back to Konoha to become Hokage, so that he could eventually become Hokage. He went on several missions, got hurt a lot, made lots of friends and was just himself. Eventually he met Xian and saved the world from a demon, she asked him to father a child with her, Naruto-kun being himself didn't know what he had agreed to. Aku's jaw continued to fall further as the story continued. After some schooling in the birds and the bees, Naruto-kun went to Xian and they produced a new life. That gets me to the sad part. Xian was about six months along when Naruto fought a man named Madara Che. This laid him up in bed for more than a month. Yashiko began to cry as she continued. Ikumo Kurama, who you haven't met yet, Hinata Hayuga, Isoribi and myself, were arguing on the finer points of who wanted Naruto-kun for their groom, but that was never destined to happen. The council had forbid him to marry anyone just before I had returned to take up the mantle of Hokage. Yashiko stopped as she began to sob uncontrollably. Isoribi wrapped Yashiko into a gentle hug. Haku noticed tears also streaming from Isoribi's eyes, but she also saw anger and hatred in them. You seen Sakura team help Sasuke team to kill Naruto-kun, Shion-chan, and their unborn baby. Naruto's last act alive was to release the Kaiubi upon Sasuke and Sakura. Haku began to cry at this point. You see Sasuke had told the village Naruto-kun's secret. He also proclaimed that by killing Naruto, he was saving the village from the Kaiubi and any possible offspring he was going to have. The Kaiubi appeared and told a different tale where the Achiha were going to betray the village. The Kaiubi went on a selective rampage as it killed all those who had ever hurt Naruto-kun. Ishiko had compassed herself to a certain extent. The Kaiubi offered us a choice to either let him die right there or we could get Naruto-kun back. Being selfish we took the deal to get Naruto-kun back. I don't get it there must have been a cost to bringing you back. Haku pointed out. You see, Kaiubi didn't want to die, and the Shinigami offered all of us the deal. You see the Kaiubi was to give up most of its power, and we gave a small portion of our souls for this. In return we were taken back in time and put into our own bodies, well, except for me. I was put into my unborn child that I had miscarried. Part of my soul powered life for me to have enough strength. There was also another catch. I also became a Jinchuriki like Naruto-kun. I hold the baby kid of the Kaiubi within me. This was enough for me to survive and be born. It also helped pull my bloodline to the surface. My mother and auntie Shizu noticed the seal on my stomach when I was born. Jiraiya checked it out after Naruto-kun had the Kaiubi sealed within him. Thanks to the Tsunade partial soul and the fox kid in me I know quite a bit. Like my father is Jiraiya, he is also Naruto-kun's godfather. Dad's comment on my seal, this one is better than Minato's by a long shot. I also know that if Naruto-kun dies, then all of us die, Isoribi, Hinata, Yakumo, Shion and I. We are tied to him by a bond from the Shinigami. I don't know if you are linked to or not Haku-chan, but the Shinigami wanted you to join us with Naruto-kun. The Kaiubi wants for Naruto kill Sasuke but is being patient. I figure about three days before the Chunin exams Naruto-kun will contact the Kaiubi and be able to access that power directly. Yashiko took a deep breath as she continued to try to compose herself to no avail. So you love him and are tied to him by fate? Haku asked. Yes and no. The only fate we have to worry about is that we do not upset the timeline too much or we do not know what will happen. 
Also I must be Naruto-kun's first mate, or again we all die. Yoshiko added. Why? Isoribi growled in disappointment. I don't know that's just the message I received from both Aki and Kaiubi. I believe it will help with the purification process Shion will perform on us when she gets her turn with Naruto-kun, my guess is that I need to be present at that time. Yoshiko added. So you get first and a double team? Not fair. Isoribi huffed in mock pouting. Aku chuckled lightly catching the attention of the arguing girls. What? Both asked in unison. Well, if what I believe is true about the shadow clones. Haku left a pregnant pause as both girls moved closer as if that would cause Haku to talk. Yoshino could have firsts and then we all could have seconds. Haku stated as she bit her nail in a seductive pose and blushed profusely. Both girls fell back on the couch with stupid grins on their faces. Why didn't we think about that? Yoshiko added nearly wanting to kick herself. Oh, I also wanted to tell you both the reason why I have been having you both train so hard. The day of the Chunin exam final sound and sand villages will be invading. I can summon slugs and Naruto-kun will be able to summon toads, specifically Gamma Bunta and Gamma Kichi on that day. We can approach Naruto-kun after he gets back from his mission to find the sound village in rice country. I will work with Aunt Shizun to make sure he goes on the right missions. After that mission we can work on attempting to date him. He might be at first resistant to it, but we will be able to wear him down, the big problem is getting my mother to agree to the marriages. I know I want to have children as does Hinata-chan and you girls, along with Yukumo and Xiong. The others will have to wait until he is 17. I do have more information, but I don't think they are ready for it. Yoshiko thought to herself. You are right Kit, how are my child and my containers first mate doing? Kaiubi's voice echoed in her mind. Pine, Yoshiko-chan has some neat dreams. Aki commented as Yoshiko blushed profusely and huffed mentally. My kid has informed me of your plan and I agree with it, I will do everything I can to make sure it happens. I will attempt to steer him to the training grounds on exam day, you just make sure Hinata is there. Also I say you try to accompany them on the mission to Rice, so you can help the girl who tried to kill Naruto-kun with the chakra strings. Kaiubi ordered kindly. Again why are you guy being so nice? I thought you were demons. Yoshiko inquired. Kaiubi chuckled. It is in our best interests to be nice, and you have the Shinigami on your side. So being nice is basically a requirement. Also that person will help sway the Fuuma clan, along with having Sasam married to Naruto-kun. Ishiko's only response was oh. Ishiko's eyes returned to normal as they had been glazed over for a couple minutes. Are you okay, Yoshiko-chan? Haku asked with a worried look. Yeah, I was just talking to Aki and Kaiubi. Guess I now know what it is like to be Naruto-kun, at least somewhat now. Yoshiko replied. So, how long until we can get together with Naruto-kun? Haku quipped. His birthday is after the Chunin exams if he does the mission to Rice like he did he will return a couple days before his birthday and we can help him celebrate and ignore the festival here in the village. I also figure Hinata will be merged by then, as Yukumo will also have done so. We can invite all those that are not outside of the village. If the timeline keeps true we will see Sasuke in the hospital, injured from Itachi. Mom will come and heal him Naruto will realize that his chances with Sakura are very low. We can talk to him then to help cheer him up. No official dates until after he gets back from Rice, agreed. Yoshiko asked almost yearning for the others to argue with her logic. Also I will have my mother send us, at least the three of us to possibly recover a dying member of the Fuuma clan, so that they will be more inclined to come to Konoha. The girls decided to end it there as Yoshiko and Haku had rounds at the hospital the next day. The days before the exam passed quickly. The council didn't bother the girls at all during this time. Kurinai did visit to inform Yoshiko that Hinata had a message for her. Things going as scheduled. She will meet him on time and make the needed contact. There was also a message from the Hokage that stated Naruto will be free to marry if he likes and the council will not interfere. This pleased the girls to no end. Training and work kept them busy. The day of the Chunin exams came and the girls attempted to follow Naruto but lost him when he ducked into an alleyway with Kinohimaru. The girls then went home and got all the weapons they could equip on themselves without attracting too much attention. Haku also brought along several water bottles as extra ammo. They made it to the arena to find that everything had gone as expected. They found Hinata sitting next to Kibo although she looked a little pale, as they passed she nodded to them, acknowledging that she had played her part in inspiring Naruto before he had arrived. The girls found seats in the area between Hinata and Sakura, wanting to keep an eye on the pink-haired girl. The first match was announced as being between Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga. Everyone left the arena for the observation area, except for Sasuke who had not arrived yet. Niji began to berate Naruto about fate, Naruto's answer was to just show his fist as he did after the fight Niji had with Hinata. The match looked like Naruto was outmatched the Hayuga genius. 
both showed great skill, Naruto using his shadow clones and Niji using advanced Jiyuken techniques. Eventually Niji had closed all of Naruto's chakra points and proclaimed his victory. Naruto then surprised everyone with reopening his chakra points with the help of Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto then began to use this power to even the playing field with Niji. Eventually Naruto and Niji collided and this left Niji digging himself out the ground and Naruto leaving a clone as bait for Niji to gloat over. Naruto had ambushed Niji from underground and won his match to the excitement of the crowd. Hinata had shown a link with Naruto when he was injured and was taken to the upper seats and healed by Kabuto. Biba delivered her to the hospital and returned only to be knocked out. Sasuke had been give more time to arrive as Shikamaru had nearly beaten Tamari, only to give up after Kankiru forfeited his match against Shino. Sasuke was given an additional 10 minutes for he still had not arrived yet. All of the girls were appalled that Sasuke had been given several chances to show up but still had not arrived yet. Right at the last second Sasuke and Kakashi showed up, impressing some but pissing off others, especially the girls. Soon after the fight began Lee arrived to show that he was actually feeling better. Ishiko knew he would still need major surgery, but it would not be as hard as it was when she had healed him before. Lee seemed disturbed by Sasuke's match as he showed off that he has stolen Lee's moves and now could use them with similar proficiency as Lee. Yoshiko and Lee noticed that Sasuke lacked the endurance that Lee had and had to revert to using the Chidori to attack and injure Gara. This was the turning point as a Jinjutsu was cast upon the arena. All three girls broke the Jinjutsu for themselves and proceeded to sneak over by Naruto. Kakashi gave an order for Sakura to wake Naruto and Ishiko took one sad look at the roof of the building that Siratobi and the Kazakiage, actually Orochimaru, as the building became surrounded by a black barrier, a tear fell from her eye as she said goodbye to her former sensei and Hokage. The three girls snuck out of the arena in pursuit of Naruto, Sakura, Shikamaru and Pakan, Kakashi summons. After taking out several sound shinobi as they moved to an area Yoshiko knew to be the final battle area. The girls had actually taken out a second pursuit team that was never been mentioned in the original report she had read while she was Hokage. They watched from afar as Sasuke got his butt handed to him by Gara, and then they saw how Naruto had saved him from imminent death. They watched as Gara pummeled Naruto, Yoshiko watched and saw the seesaw battle go until Naruto finally got inspired. They then watched in awe as Naruto pulled one move after another as he returned the beating he had received from Gara several thousandfold. Both finally exhausted Gara was give the advantage and began to surround Naruto with his sand. Naruto, by all impossible odds summoned Gamabunta. Thus began yet another battle as Gamabunta and Naruto began to fight Shukaku. Naruto and Gamabunta for a short time transformed into the Kaiubi. The girls all smiled at this. The battle ended with Naruto punching Gara in the face and both falling to the ground as they had dismissed both Gamabunta and Shukaku moments before they traded blows. Bulgara had been forced to dismiss Shukaku and Gamabunta could no longer battle so he and Gamakichi left for home. Both boys hit the ground hard but Naruto continued to crawl towards Gara, sending fear through the Ichibi container. They saw fear in his eyes as Sasuke rescued Sakura and then moved to reassure Naruto that she was safe. Haku sighed sadly. The girls appeared as Naruto passed out and began to administer first aid as the Sand siblings fled the scene. The things that concerned the girls were that Sasuke's face showed that his curse seal showed that he no longer had it under his control. Yoshiko pronounced that Naruto was suffering from chakra exhaustion and Haku stated that Sakura had a couple cracked ribs. The girls each took one person as they headed back to the village. Yoshiko took Naruto, Aisuribi took Sasuke and Haku took Sakura on their shoulders as they made their way back to the village. They stopped to help render assistance to Shino and his father after Kankiru had poisoned Shino. Upon reaching the village they dropped of everyone at the hospital and Yoshiko and Haku had to work. Aisuribi left so that she could get out of the way but was stopped by Kurenai. Naruto woke to find four girls in his hospital room, Haku who was reading his chart and smiling, Yoshiko who was adjusting an IV bag, Hinata who just smiled at him while sitting next to him her own hospital gown, and finally there was a pale brown haired girl who just smiled while she sat next to Hinata. Hinata spoke up first. Good morning Naruto kun. This caused the other girls to turn and look at Naruto. All smiled warmly at him, he was not sure what to do so he began by smiling. Morning Hinata, how are you? Hinata blushed then spoke. I am better now Naruto-kun, thank you. I would like to thank you for helping my family especially Niji Niasen. Naruto grinned broadly. See, I keep my promises, Hinata. I also think I pulled that stick out of his ass. Ishiko and Haku both giggled at Naruto's statement, but Yakumo and Hinata both blushed and put their hands over their mouths to stifle their giggles. Yes Naruto-kun, I think you did, you also made a friend of him. Yashiko replied. Naruto blushed and became embarrassed. I have two questions. Haku smiled and nodded at Naruto. And what would those be, Naruto-kun? 
Naruto took a deep breath. Is Sakurichan okay? Ishiko moved over and put her hand on Naruto's head, this caused Naruto to blush. She had minor injuries, Haku-chan, and I arrived just after your battle with Gara the dessert. Haku-chan treated her for cracked ribs and a concussion. Sasuke had minor bruises and was suffering from chakra exhaustion. You my dear Yashiko drugged the deer out seductively as she touched his chin affectionately. Suffered from chakra exhaustion, broken ribs, a broken right arm, internal bruising and bleeding. You took a pounding out there, I am just glad we were there to help you. So what is your second question? Naruto began to stutter. Um why are all you girls here in my room? Hinata began to giggle. Because silly, we all care about you Naruto-kun. Hinata explained. Ikumo stood and bowed to Naruto. I am Yakumo Kurama of the Kurama clan. I am here because I owe you a debt and have watched you from afar. As a matter of fact we all have. Naruto looked around the room and saw that all the girls nodded in turn as his gaze fell upon them. Huh. Why watch me and not the team, I mean Sasuke. Ishiko sat on the bed next to Naruto, to which he blushed. Because silly we find that there is more to you than the stuck-up Acha. We prefer our mystery man of the happy variety. Naruto looked around the room again, only to see them all nod again. A nurse entered the room and looked around the room seeing three house heirs and the newest medic who also had a bloodline all in the demon's room. De Naruto, you will be released in a couple hours. Yashiko-sama and Haku-chan there are other patients that require care. Can you go check on Sasuke-sama please? Ishiko's and Haku's faces both turned dark for an instant, only Hinata and Yakumo noticed. Yashiko in the most sickly sweet voice she could muster replied. But of course I would love to dote over the last of the great Ichiha. Wouldn't you Haku-chan? Naruto noticed the sarcasm and suppressed a grin. But of course I would love to spend some time with Sasu-chan. Shall we go? Haku replied with the most evil grin Naruto had ever seen cross the girl's face. He almost felt sorry for Sasuke, almost. The nurse, Yashiko, and Haku all left the room as the remaining inhabitants laughed heartily. Hinata blushed. Naruto-kun, please be safe. Hinata got up gently placed her hands upon Naruto's cheeks and then planted a passionate kiss on Naruto's lips, she then left the room as she smiled longingly at Naruto who wore a stupid grin. Naruto after a few minutes a confused look came upon his face as he watched the doorway where Hinata had left a little bit ago. What was that all about? Ikumo blushed. I will tell you in a month or so. Until then do not dwell on it. Just remember you have friends and we all care about you, Naruto-kun. I must take my leave of you or I will be late for my own checkup. Have a good day and be safe. Yakumo stood and bowed to Naruto, she then left not sure if she had said too much or not. She was almost sure that Hinata was pushing the envelope, but he needed to get a clue, even if they had to strip him down and have their way with him, then so be it. Naruto called after her. Goodbye Yakumo-san and it was nice to meet you. Naruto heard what he thought was Haku screaming, and then a second later Sasuke screamed like a girl. Naruto chuckled at the thought of Haku pushing an eye senbin into Sasuke's backside. Kakashi entered the room. Yo. How is my hyperactive student? Not causing too much trouble for the staff or you? Kakashi asked nonchalantly. Naruto folded his arms and fed a Kakashi. No actually they are kicking me out later today. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Good job in getting Sasuke to safety. I understand that he was exhausted after fighting Gara. Naruto eyed his sensei. You could say that. If Hiro Senen hadn't taken the time to train me a lot of people would be dead now. Sasuke was only able to injure Gara, but he only awakened his anger and made fighting him that much worse. Akashi flashed a look of anger and then waved as he left. Glad to see you're feeling better. The Hokage's funeral will be tomorrow, full funeral attire, we will meet on top of the tower for the ceremony. I'm sorry Naruto. Kakashi looked back sadly as Naruto felt devastated by the reality that Sirotobi, the third Hokage and his adoptive grandfather was now dead. The rest of Naruto's day went by him in a blur. He later just went home and went to bed. The funeral was attended by the whole village, even those who could be wheeled to the event even attended. Yashiko was able to be up on the tower with a shinobi, she heard Aruka, Naruto and Kakashi talk about the loss to the village as Aruka attempted to comfort Kinohimaru. Ishiko later watched as Kakashi teasingly told Naruto how to create a Chidori, knowing full well that he would not teach him that jutsu. She also overheard the conversation between Sakura and Sasuke, where he awarded the credit for saving her to Naruto, even after Sakura insisted that Naruto could never have accomplished it. Ishiko also noticed the look in Sasuke's eyes of resentment towards Naruto for being able to defeat an opponent that he couldn't. Ishiko visited Naruto the next morning an hour before Jiraiya took him out of the village to go find Tsunade. Yashiko knocked on Naruto's door. Naruto opened the door a few moments later in only his boxers. Yeah what is it? Naruto asked sleepily. Ishiko chuckled at Naruto's state of undress. Do you answer the door in your boxers all the time, Naruto-kun? 
Naruto chuckled in embarrassment as he realized that he was not even dressed. He dashed back into his apartment only to leave the door open. Yashiko stepped in and took off her sandals. May I come in Naruto-kun? Yashiko heard Naruto respond from farther in the apartment. Yeah sure you can come in. So what is your visit for? Ishiko blushed as she lied to Naruto. I just wanted to check up on you after your discharge from the hospital and after the funeral. I know you were close to him and it was just kind of strange that they let you out before your wounds should not have been fully healed. Naruto came before her in a black t-shirt with an orange Kanoha leaf symbol on the front and his normal pants. Oh they do that to me all the time, except for Dr. Kakio, she is one of the ones that makes sure I am alright before she says I can go. There are a couple of nurses that watch over me too. Yashiko used her index finger to indicate that she wanted Naruto to approach her, so Naruto complied as Yashiko kissed him on the forehead. Now you have two more nurses that will watch over you. You also have others that will also watch over you. Naruto blushed but also wore a confused look on his face. Do you mean Haku-chan too? Naruto asked as Yashiko nodded. So what was with Hinata-chan Naruto whispered the term of endearment. Yashiko looked wryly at Naruto. What do you mean? Naruto looked frustrated. Well I was hoping my first kiss would be with Sakura-chan, but some guy bumped into me and I kissed Sasuke team. Naruto stated with much revulsion as Yoshiko politely chuckled at Naruto's troubles. And then when all you girls were in my room, Hinata-chan kissed me on the lips when she left. Yoshiko smiled warmly at Naruto. So you are worried that Sakura-sen will hear about this and be angry? Naruto nodded at the question. I am sure if you ask Hinata-chan she wouldn't mind doing it again. I'm tempted to kiss you too. Yashiko's statement caused fear to creep into Naruto's face. Don't worry, I will not kiss you yet, it is not time and we do not know each other well enough, yet. Will you that is a relief. I was worried that all you girls were going to kiss me all at once. Naruto stated. Would you like that Naruto-kun? Yashiko's question caused Naruto to wonder if he did. No matter, please sit on the bed and sit still. Yashiko ordered as she began a diagnostic on Naruto. Jiraiya came in just as she had moved over his pelvis. Entertaining girls in your home now are we Naruto. You are a boy after my own heart and Princess Tsunade's daughter no less, I'm impressed. Jiraiya stated with a leer as Yoshiko blushed, Jiraiya didn't fail to notice this reaction as she finished her diagnostic jutsu. Shut up Hiro Senen. Naruto replied in an annoyed voice. What are you doing here anyways? Jiraiya smirked and pointed at Yoshiko. We are going to go retrieve a beautiful woman, her mother to be exact. And I am going to give you some training on the way. I have already cleared it with Kakashi and the council so we are off. Ishiko bowed as Naruto began to collect items for a trip to retrieve someone. Excuse me Master Jiraiya, but am I going along too? Jiraiya looked at her and bade her to approach. Naruto you get ready, I have to talk to yashiko chan here. Jiraiya turned to Yashiko and spoke in hushed tones. I hope you know what you are doing. That boy may not want to be involved with you. I will also leave it to you to explain to your mother about what you want from him, and you do not have to come on this mission, I had set it up so it would be me and Naruto. Thank you for your concern Master Jiraiya, but I will eventually worm my way into his heart. He is not so hard to understand, less so than people might think. He is bright and talented, if here were given a chance he could prove that. As for not telling my mother I thank you for that. I will inform her when I see her again. Yashiko assured Jiraiya. Just don't let him break your heart when, you know when he puts his mind to something he will not give up easily or possibly at all. From what I have seen he has it hard for the pink-haired girl on his team. Jiraiya warned her. She doesn't care for him so she will lose to me as I do care for the boy. Yashiko replied as she kept an eye on Naruto out of the corner of her eye. But does he know about it, if not then he will be oblivious to it and he may not even be able to love. Jiraiya stated with a very saddened look on his face. You know something about him and his hard life don't you? Yashiko questioned. Nothing I can tell you. I wish you luck in your quest. Jiraiya graciously stated as he put a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Jiraiya turned to Naruto and spoke up. Time to go we have to catch an important woman, now let's go. Yeah, I just hope he is not going to peek on your mother in some bath. Naruto stated as he approached the two at his door. Yashiko giggled as she knew that Tsunade had nearly killed him for that once, as Jiraiya paled at the notion of peeking on Tsunade. Good luck Naruto-kun, I will wait for you safe return. Yashiko called as the two males walked towards the gates. Naruto waved at Yashiko as smiled and waved back. The other four members of the Naruto fan club hid as Naruto left the village. Yashiko eventually saw a guy bring back Sasuke later that same day. She knew how to fix the problem, but lacked the chakra control, she needed to have more chakra control to fix the Jinjutsu that Itachi had placed upon Sasuke, but also knew that her mother would have to fix it so that Naruto would see how little Sakura thought of him, even for helping his rival and her crush. Her work with Lee left him only needing major surgery from her mother, not life-threatening surgery. 
It would take some work for Tsune to figure out the details of the surgery. Yoshiko knew it, but did not want to share as it would create more possible problems with the timeline when she didn't want them to appear just yet. Yoshiko notified the hospital that she would be taking a week or two off in a couple weeks. Haku and Isoribi were concerned and asked why. Yoshiko's answer was simple. I need to be there for Naruto-kun on his return trip. If I can make a connection to him it will be easier for him to make a break from Sakura. I also need to confront my mother and father. You know who your father is? Haku asked as Isoribi listened intently. Believe it or not Jiraiya is my father. And this way I will have them in the same place at once so I can get them to admit to it. I can also inform them that I know that I am a Jinchuriki like Naruto-kun. I also know that Naruto-kun will suffer a near fatal injury, only my mother can fix it, but I want to be there to help if I can. I will try not to interfere, but he will need extensive healing as will everyone that is coming back. Jurei will suffer broken ribs and a broken ankle. Shizun will suffer from torn Achilles tendons and mom will suffer from using her healing jutsu. Yoshiko commented. I forgot that little tidbit, sorry. Then go bring our man back to us and make sure he is okay. Now that people are getting back to work we will have less to do at the hospital. I am sure we can live without you at the hospital for a little while. We also will continue to train. We have added both Hinata-chan and Yakumo-chan to the training regime. Kurinai-san has also asked if she and the rest of her team could join us in our training, as has Asuma-san. I am not sure how to answer, they seem to want to have their teams work on chakra control and have one of their team members become a medic. We have that already with Hinata-chan, and Yakumo isn't even a shinobi or shinobi trained. We have been slowly working on her stamina and strength. Haku replied with a sly smile. Ishiko nodded as she assimilated the information. Since when have you guys been working with Yakumo-chan? It happened last a couple days ago when both her Anbu doctor and Kurinai-san gave her a clean bill of health. Kurinai also offered up Anko-san to be a possible sensei for our group if we actually become shinobi. Isoribi replied. Well we have four females two have been truly trained, the other two have no practical training. That would be Haku and me with the actual training. While Yakumo-chan and Isoribi-chan are talented they do not have actual training. The best we could hope for would be that we would be a team with either Haku-chan or I become the sensei. Otherwise we would have to be split. We are also heavy in medical training. I am afraid we might also have to take Sakura into our little group if only to make sure she gets medical training. Isoribi-chan could get some training in Tojutsu, but Yakumo-chan is our weak point, while she is strong in Jinjutsu she needs to be stronger in both Tojutsu and Ninjutsu. Yoshiko pointed out. I am working with Guy on the Tojutsu training. He and Lee seem quite willing to help me. Yakumo-chan would not be able to keep up with their schedule, I can only last for about 30 minutes on their schedule, but they do enjoy the company. Oh, and I will not wear that ridiculous spandex outfit. I do not want to be seen as if I were wearing nothing at all. It leaves little to the imagination, I would rather go naked than wear that outfit, but if Naruto-kun wanted me to wear it, I would for him and only him. Isoribi admitted with a blush as the other two girls laughed. The next week was spent working at the hospital and training. Kurinai's full team showed up if they were not doing missions, only Ino from Asuma's team showed up for the training. Yoshiko and Haku were taskmasters in training even pushing Kurinai near her limits in both physical and mental abilities. Ishiko would work everyone in the fields of medicine, either with plant knowledge, poison knowledge or medicinal knowledge. Haku focused on the physical, this left everyone that attended the training worn out physically and mentally. Ikumo made tremendous strides in improving her physical abilities, she went from being a weak, barely able to move girl to actually having the physical abilities of a second year academy student. Kurinai was pleased with her progress and was not at all worried if she actually hurt herself, as there were two trained medical personnel ready to render assistance. Hiba and Shino added to the training with their knowledge of both animals and insects. After the week of intensive training Yoshiko gave them all a book project to work on while she would be off on a trip to find her mother. Haku would continue the training, but at a much slower pace as they would only have one medic ready to go. Yoshiko left the village with little fanfare other than an Anbu with a symbol of Northeast on his mask. The Anbu finally left her alone after about half day's travel out from the village. Yoshiko was glad to have gotten rid of the root member. Although she did run into a couple bandits along the way, she made short work of them as she continued on her way to Adafukugai and the meeting she would have with Naruto-kun, Jiraiya, Shizune and her good old mother. She entered the town and booked a room in the inn that she knew they would be staying in. She got to the baths and soaked for a couple hours before she knew they would arrive. She came up to her room just as Naruto, Jiraiya, Shizune and Tsunade began to enter their rooms. Yoshiko began to run as she headed towards Tsunade. Mom. Tsunade turned and looked at Yoshiko in surprise. Yoshiko-chan. What are you doing here? 
I had a guess that Naruto-kun would find you and I figured that you would stay here, and so I decided to meet you on your way back. I missed you mother. Yoshiko embraced Tsunade. Naruto blanched and pointed at Yoshiko and Tsunade. You you mean she's your mother? The fear was evident in his voice. Yoshiko nodded. Yes Naruto-kun, she is my mother. Naruto continued to stammer out his opinions. But but she is old enough to be my grandmother. Tsunade became angry and the vein on her temple appeared. Listen here brat. Ishiko placed her hand on her mother's arm to calm her. Yes, she is old enough to be your grandmother, but she is also old enough to be your mother too. She is my mother and I am only 14. So are you going to apologize or do I let my mother go so she can make you apologize to her, Naruto-kun? Naruto looked defeated and dropped his head down in defeat. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear that brat Tsunade stated wanting to milk the situation for all it was worth. Ishiko swatted her mother. Mother, be nice to Naruto-kun. It suddenly hit her that Yoshiko was referring to Naruto in an affectionate tone. Naruto-kun. What have you been doing while I was not around young lady? Yoshiko gave her mother a firm stare. We will discuss this in a little bit after you have gotten settled. Yoshiko pushed Tsunade into her room as Shizune closed the door behind them. Okay young lady, what is going on? Yoshiko took a deep breath. Look mom, I found out some things and want to confirm them. Tsunade's eyebrow rose quizzically. And those are? Did Naruto-kun convince you to return as the new Hokage? Yoshiko asked as she sat on the floor. Why, yes he did, he can be a quite a persuasive person. Tsunade stated as she continued to reminisce about the last few days. Is Naruto-kun the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi? Yoshiko went for the jugular. Tsunade was immediately pulled from her stupor. Who told you that? Yoshiko sighed. I just felt it. Tsunade shook her head. How did I get a daughter who could predict the future? To answer your question, yes this is a Jinchuriki. I shouldn't have told you that, but if you know then no need to keep it secret. So he is like me. Yoshiko exclaimed. Tsunade sighed. Yes and no. He was not born with a spirit sealed within him. I can't tell you which spirit he has sealed within him, but you might not want to get too close to him. Yoshiko became very angry. I know he has the Kaiubi in him, like Gara, Hashukaku, Karabi has the eight tails, and Yujito Nai has the two-tailed cat sealed within her. Shizun gasped. Tsunade looked concerned at her daughter. How do you know this? Aki told me. Yoshiko stated bluntly. You are bending the truth as I have never told you this. Just don't get me in trouble let's see how far we can take this. Aki stated in her mind. I know that, but they don't so we can just wing it and if they ever figure it out then we worry about it then. Yoshiko replied mentally. Who is Aki? Tsunade asked pointedly. Aki is my burden, my demon. I have talked to her. She knows that Naruto-kun houses the Kaiubi. She also says that I can help Naruto-kun because I possess the Mokuten ability like great-grandfather. I just need training. Yoshiko replied. Okay let's say that we believe Aki and you do possess the Mokuten ability. Why the sudden interest in Naruto? Tsunade asked as Yoshiko blushed. No, you can't tell me that you actually like the boy. Yoshiko nodded with a blush. I know we are still young and he is only 12 and soon to be 13, but there is a connection that I can't deny. Are you sure it isn't your demon telling you this and steering you towards him? Tsunade asked. Ishiko nodded. Naruto-kun is the nicest person I have met. He cares for others and is quite strong, no thanks to others' sabotage. I believe I can help him and he can help me. It is almost as if we were meant to be together. Please mother, do not deny me this. Yoshiko pleaded. Tsunade sighed heavily. Geez if I knew being a parent would have been this taxing, I would have opted to not have one. Tsunade relented. Okay, you can date him, but he will have to come over for dinner and make himself presentable. Yoshiko nodded, but worry crept into her face. What is it now? Well, a couple things. Naruto-kun never had a proper upbringing and is a little rough around the edges. Yoshiko replied shyly. Rough around the edges? Like broken glass or rough gravel, but I understand what you mean. You can help him become more presentable. What else is there? Tsunade inquired. Well there are a couple of other girls that are living at the compound. Yoshiko braced herself for her mother to yell at her, when it never came she looked up and saw that her mother wanted her to continue. One also has a bloodline, one having to do with ice, Naruto-kun, and I saved her at a bridge named after Naruto-kun. The other might have a bloodline, but has had her genetics messed with by Orochimaru. We are hoping to help her become more presentable or finish the bloodline surfacing. Okay that is fine, is there anything else like all of you liking Naruto? Tsunade asked as she saw Yoshiko freeze. No, not all of you. Yoshiko shook her head. So only a couple of you? Yoshiko again shook her head. How many? Yoshiko put up both hands. Ten, what did this boy do to get that many girls to fall for him? Yoshiko shrugged. Anything else I should know? Yoshiko nodded. 
Yes mother, I know who my father is. Tsunade froze this time. I am sure you can guess who it is, but I do know. Yashiko was adamant about her knowledge. Okay who is it? Tsunade asked with a smirk. Dureya. Yashiko answered as Tsunade's jaw dropped. I am glad that I know who he is. I do not plan on following in his footsteps as a lecher. Good, too bad I didn't actually marry the old fool. You might have had a sibling. So show me your Mokuten ability. Tsunade stated to change the subject. Ishiko placed her hands together and a small band's eye like tree rose out of the floor. I can do a little more than that, but it takes a lot of concentration. I wonder if Naruto-kun has a similar bloodline. Great I have boy crazy daughter and she is after one who has half the village chasing him. Tsunade complained. No mother, most of the village detests him. It is changing but it will take time. As far as I know Haku-chan, Hinata Hayuga-chan, Isoribi-chan, Yakumo Kurama-chan, and Shion from the Land of Demons, has true feelings for Naruto-kun, but I have a feeling that there will be others. Yashiko corrected her mother. Tsunade shook her head. Three clan heiresses, a priestess and two others right now. Does Naruto know about this? Yashiko shook her head. No, Naruto-kun is fixated on his teammate Sakura Haruno. She abuses him and demeans him at every turn in favor of her other teammate Sasuke Chia who I might add is currently in the hospital because of his brother Itachi. Sakura currently will not even leave his side to even train. S we head back to Konoha and fix things tomorrow. Tsunade admitted. Thank you mother. Yashiko stated as she lunged into a hug with Tsunade. For what? Tsunade asked confused. For understanding about how I feel about Naruto-kun and about everything else. Yashiko admitted. Tsunade tightened the embrace with Yashiko. I am your mother and I understand first love. Just don't let him hurt you. Ishiko nodded. I want to go spend some time with Naruto-kun, maybe I can steal him out from under the pink head while well, she doesn't even know what she has. Tsunade nodded as she continued to hug Yashiko, but also warned her. I do not want any grandchildren anytime soon. You can do that when you reach 18 years old. Deal. Yashiko blushed and nodded as she left. Ishiko entered the bathhouse knowing full well that Jureya was there and that Naruto was not. She kept the towel tight to herself. Well we have a young Kinoichi in training. You are a little young for my tastes. Your boyfriend has already left. Jiraiya stated in a boisterous voice. Ishiko gently sat in the water. Master Jiraiya, I wish to speak to you without Naruto Kun around. Jiraiya became deathly serious. What did you wish to discuss? Ishiko smiled innocently. My parentage. Jiraiya looked confused. What about your parentage? About you being my father. Yashiko replied with a smile. Jiraiya's face became pale. You are my daughter, but Tsunade Haim said it was someone else. No, you are my father, just like I have a two-tailed fox sealed within me by the Shinigami. I came here to tell you this and to ask you a favor. Yashiko admitted. You have a demon fox sealed within you? Jiraiya looked quizzically at Yashiko. Yes like Naruto-kun but not as powerful. Yashiko admitted. Is that why you pursue Naruto? Jiraiya questioned. No, I pursue him because I feel more than a connection with him, I think I love him. Yashiko stated with a blush. Strong words from a 14-year-old. Jiraiya stated. Yes they are but he has a certain magnetism about him that I find appealing. I have already gotten permission to date him from my mother. Now for that favor, could you train Naruto-kun to protect himself from those that are out to get him? Yashiko pleaded. How do you know about people that are out to get him? Jiraiya inquired. Demons learn things and mind talks to me. It is afraid of my Mokuten abilities so it is helping me. Yashiko replied. So you are like your great-grandfather the first? Jiraiya questioned as Yashiko nodded. So what can I do to help you with Agaki? You know he is fixated on that Haruna girl. That will come in time. He will see her for what she is, an uncaring girl who would just use him for her own ends to get into the pants of the Ichiha. Yashiko stated with much venom in her voice. I take it you don't like her. Jiraiya replied with a chuckle. Nope, not really. Yashiko admitted with a smile. Well, dad, I need to get out and start my courting of Naruto Uzumaki. I figure it should take at least a couple years before I can get him to marry me. What do you think? If he is smart he will give up now and become my son-in-law as soon as your mother will let him. Jurei replied with a lecherous grin. I advise you not use us for your novels, if I get my way he will know about you being my father and all the money you made from the books. Yashiko stated with a smirk and exited the bath with a wave. You are nearly as bad as your mother. Maybe I should ask her to marry me. Jiraiya said to no one in particular. You should hurry up then, as there might still be a chance I could have a sibling. Yashiko telegraphed over her shoulder as she entered the changing room. Yashiko smirked as she closed the door and got dressed. She smiled inwardly as it would be nice if her mother would actually go with her feelings and marry the old pervert. 
that would save her heart from breaking, him from beatings and maybe his later death at the hands of pain. A single tear came from her eye as she remembered the news of his demise. Yoshiko left the building just as a group of elderly women entered the changing room, she couldn't help but smirk at what was going to happen today. Naruto-kun in an admirable display of chivalry would force Tsune to see that her gambling ways were not so helpful to being a hokage. She eventually found Naruto or at least one of Naruto's clones. She had to admit he cleaned up better than she thought about it. She found out it was a clone by pulling it into an ally to get it away from Shizune, who had used a transformation just to appear as Tsunade. Shut up and kiss me if you want to hide from my mother. Ishiko demanded, and the clone showed his lack of experience kissing by puckering his lips and making a fishy face. No, relax and do it like this. Yoshiko then proceeded to kiss Naruto, once he understood what to do she found him to actually be a good kisser. That was until an angry Tsunade smacked the Naruto in the back of the head, he then disappeared in a puff of smoke. Ishiko was angry. Mother. I was working on getting him to dinner and look what you did. I am betting he doesn't even know that a shadow clone's memory transfers back to the original. Now look at all the work you have destroyed. Yoshiko knew it was Shizune, but showed her righteous indignation at her kiss being disturbed. Shizune released the hinge only to be pummeled by Yoshiko as she yelled. Stay out of my love life. Shizune disappeared in a puff of smoke. Another Shizune came around the corner rather angry. What were you doing kissing Naruto-kun? Trying to hide him from you apparently so that I could ask him to dinner after we got back to Konoha, but you had to interfere. Yoshiko retaliated. Don't take that tone with me young lady. Shizune ordered. Auntie, you ruined my perfect way to show Naruto-kun that I care about him, you don't care about my life. Yoshiko ran off crying. Shizune looked down and saddened. I thought I was just protecting Tsunade-sama. Wait I got him. Shizune ran off in another direction. Shizune and Tsunade form had caught Naruto with the suitcase he had taken. Tsunade, Yoshiko and boss Jiracho looked on in awe as Naruto attempted to get away from Shizune and hand the case to a couple of hired men, trying to make good on a debt Tsunade owed. Eventually it was all straightened out as the money had been paid back at an earlier date. Shizune was quite embarrassed by the whole affair. She also had to explain why Yoshiko was upset in front of Naruto. Naruto was surprised to say the least as the memories of the clone came slowly to him, he looked at Yoshiko who was blushing and smiled kindly at him, he blushed in return. Naruto-kun, will you be our guest for dinner when we return to Konoha? Yoshiko asked as Naruto just nodded, she then leaned up to Naruto and kissed him on the cheek. She then whispered into his ear, I meant the other one too. Naruto thought about that and the kiss that Hinata had given him and promptly fainted to the laughter of everyone else. Naruto enjoyed the trip back home to Konoha. An older girl had kissed him and his clone, the big problem for him was how to deal with Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan when he returned. Sure Yoshiko was pretty and nice to him if only a little bossy, but compared to Sakura-chan she was a saint. When did I start to think of Hinata as Chan? And would Yoshiko be a Chan too? He kept on glancing over at Yoshiko every so often as she talked to her mother, Tsunade, who was now the fifth Hokage. He wondered what they were talking about. Yoshiko noticed every glance that Naruto made her way and blushed every time just like he did. She was not sure what was going through the other blonde genin's mind, but she was sure she was at least playing a part in it. So mom, do you have any problems with me maybe eventually marrying that boy? Yoshiko inquired. You have been on your own for two years now, just so long as I don't get any grandchildren until he is at least 16, after that I don't care. What has caused your interest other than being able to talk to your tenant? Tsunade asked her daughter not sure she actually wanted to know. Ishiko smirked and just couldn't help herself. Well Hinata-chan told me that he was most capable male in their class. Yoshiko replied and blushed profusely. Tsunade stopped dead. You didn't just say that did you? You have him involved the daughter of the Hayuga along with yourself already. Ishiko could not help but keep the tease going. Well Yakumo Kurama-chan is also interested in him too, I did mention this before. Yoshiko got a faraway thinking look on her face. And there is also Haku-chan and Isoribi-chan. How did he get such a fan club? Tsunade was astonished that this boy had such following of prestigious females, while well, inwardly she chuckled that the Achiha boy could only get fan girls. Well it helps that he is so cute and does not fight us or run away. Also we do not follow him blindly and chase after him. We are working our way into his head and heart slowly. We all know he is only an unrefined boy of 12. I also have my bets that his paternity is actually of royal or noble blood. Yoshiko pointed out. Tsunade looked at her daughter as if she was someone else. What makes you think that? Ishiko put her hand up to Tsunade's ear. He is the spitting image of Minato Namikas. Pull off the whisker marks and you have his near double. Of course you would actually have to feed him a proper diet. I have seen him and he is undernourished for his age. Looking at his clothes you would think he was the proper weight, but both of us know he is very underweight. 
So you want to marry Upper so you think. What if I can prove that he is not the son of the Yandame? Sunade inquired. Want to lose another bet with me mother? Yashiko asked playfully. Okay let's say you're right. Why has he not been honored for who he is? Sunade asked. Maybe because his parents are dead and they had many enemies, like say Iwa or members on the Kanoha council. I am betting they are even now trying to make it so that Naruto-kun can't marry anyone or be happy later in life. He is the innocent party in this whole Jinchuriki deal, but the village pushes all their anger and fear upon Naruto-kun. Yashiko sadly stated. I even bet you thought of him as Kaiubi first and then as Naruto-kun afterwards. Tsunade lowered her head in shame. What do you want Yashi-chan? Yashiko smiled broadly. I want to help with his mission assignments. I also want you to make me either a shinobi or give me a means to help him on some of his assignments. I also want to determine who can marry Naruto-kun. I would also like to create my own team. I already have some people in mind. Tsunade was taken aback. Will he agree to that? Ishiko nodded with a smile. Yes mother I am sure he will agree. He has already met most of his fan club while he was in the hospital, there are five of us now in Konoha, but more may come around eventually. Are the members of your team also members of the fan club? Tsunade asked with a perverted leer. Ishiko nodded. Mostly, okay yes they are. I will give you a rundown of the fan club. First there is me, then there is Hinata Hayuga, Yakumo Kurama, the priestess Shion, Haku-chan, and Isoribi-chan. Hinata-chan is already on a team and all the others are not shinobi. Haku-chan and I are shinobi trained. Kurinai-san suggested we have Anko Mitarashi be our jonin instructor. Haku-chan and I are of at least chunin or even a higher level. My one question would be would you treat Naruto-kun first before any other injured parties on a mission? Tsunade asked in all seriousness. Ishiko smiled. No, Naruto-kun has enhanced healing and stamina recovery. I would triage the injured as expected. Both Haku-chan and I are fairly good medics. So I would say we were a medical team with some unique abilities in a fight. Tsunade gave Yoshiko a sidelong glance. What are your capabilities? I am similar to you and Jureya in that I am a brawler with enhanced strength and a fairly good arsenal of jutsu, mostly water, earth and of course Mokuten. Haku-chan is an ice jutsu expert so she knows water, some wind jutsu, and Hyun. Yakumo is a jinjutsu expert. Isoribi is a water jutsu expert and a fair brawler. Yashiko responded. Sounds like you have an overbalanced team for short range and are medical users. Yakumo doesn't have any to jutsu I assume. Tsunade asked. You are correct, but we are working on that deficiency, she is weak, but her strength is increasing every day with our training. Yashiko added. Tsunade sighed. I will think about it. That is not a yes or a no. I would also like to make sure that everyone in your group can pass the genin test. As Hokage I could use a special medical unit. I would worry about you as you are my daughter. I also wouldn't want you to expect special favors for being the daughter of the Hokage. Okay no favors, but I would like my opinion listen too. I could also help you out around the office when I am not out on missions or working at the hospital. Yashiko replied to her mother's concerns, she then smiled wryly. I will also endeavor to keep a certain genin in line. Not with the types of favors your father likes I hope. Tsunade quipped. Only after we are married would I do that mother. Well maybe before, but not until he is at least 16. I just hope he finds being like father is not beneficial to his life expectancy. Yashiko countered. So have you talked to him about being a father? Tsunade asked. Ishiko nodded. Yes, but he glossed over it, but said he should have married you those years ago. Tsunade smiled affectionately. I would only agree to that on the condition that he did not do his research, and we both know he will not do that. What about me getting another sibling? Yashiko teased. Tsunade shook her head. I will take it under consideration. I might even use your boyfriend and Shizun to give you a sibling. Yashiko froze. No, he is mine. Yashiko yelled as Tsunade began to laugh hysterically. Not funny mother. Everyone looked at Yashiko as she yelled at her mother. Naruto was not quite sure if her comment was directed at him or not, if it was he was in more trouble with Sakura-chan than he was before. Naruto suddenly stopped and everyone looked at him wondering what was going on. Naruto found himself in the dank dark realm of his mind where the Kaiubi dwelt. Right now what does that damn fox want now? Naruto walked towards the cage and looked directly at the fox. What do you want now fox? The fox laughed. Do you like the blonde girl? You can have her if you like, she can teach you many wonderful things. The fox teased. Naruto looked at the fox with a confused look. What do you mean wonderful? She is a good kisser. I just wish Sakura would kiss me like that. Be gone well pen bother me no more, we will talk again. The fox told Naruto as he came back to reality as Yoshiko wore a concerned look on her face, and her face was only an inch from his face. So close so close she is so cute Naruto thought to himself as he quickly turned red and passed out. 
the adult began to laugh as Yoshiko quickly rested Naruto's head on her lap. Naruto quickly woke up to see Yoshiko smile at him and help him to stand. Naruto smiled weakly at Yoshiko as he did not know what to do. He apologized for fainting, but was surprised by Yoshiko being in his face when he had been thinking. It is okay Naruto-kun, you are not alone in the burden you carry, there are others. Yoshiko replied as she looked at her mother to see if she would let her tell her secret. Tsunade smiled and nodded, Naruto saw this and was not sure what was coming next. You must tell no one what I am about to tell you. Yoshiko stated, but he could see her pleading in her eyes, he just nodded his response. I am also a Jinchuriki, as I also carry a demon fox inside of me. Naruto stopped dead. What did you say? Ishiko took Naruto's hands into her own and smiled weakly. I also carry a demon fox sealed within me. It is nowhere near as powerful as yours. Please don't hate me. Naruto was shocked to know that there was another beyond Gara and himself that carried demons. Is that why she seemed so desperate to show me affection? Ishiko's eyes began to tear up. Please say something she pleaded. Naruto did what he knew best he smiled a big grin and played dumb. I believe you Yoshiko-chan. How did you know I am a Jinchu Jinker what you called it? Ishiko chuckled at Naruto and smiled warmly as a tear ran down her cheek. They are called Jinchuriki, a human sacrifice. It is a way to deal with a demon. We both carry demon foxes. I might be able to help you with yours if you like. Yoshiko offered. Naruto reached up and began to wipe the tear on her cheek away, only to find her pressing her face into his hand. Naruto was totally confused. Gureya sighed at the scene and then walked over to Naruto and bonked him on the head. He then took Naruto aside. Gaki, you have will eventually have some choices to make. I can tell that she likes you, but I know you like that pink-haired teammate of yours. My advice is for now to at least get to know the girls around you, you can date all of them that will put up with you, but don't date them at the same time. That would be a bad idea. Now when we get back we fix up your teammate and I can do some training with you and you can return to going on missions. Jiraiya explained. Training, great when can we begin? Naruto inquired excitedly. You still have some healing to do, but we can start in a couple days, and having a cute nurse as a girlfriend will make you heal a little quicker. Jiraiya stated as Naruto looked back at Yoshiko who had her hands clasped in front of her, blushing, and was turning side to side while she looked wistfully at Naruto. Amic. Yoshiko invited Naruto up to her room with a sinister purpose. She closed and locked the door after Haku, Hinata, and Aisiribi all entered the room with her and Naruto. Okay show me your distraction jutsu, you are so famous for. Naruto didn't even think about his surroundings, in that he was surrounded by girls and was going to show them a naked girl. Alright, here we go. Sexy Jutsu Naruto changed into a beautiful young woman of between 18 and 20. She wore nothing other than whiffs of clouds. Ishiko took an analytical pose and then walked over to Naruto. Okay I can see why the guys fall for it. What is this? She touched the cloud and it didn't move. Some form of Jinjutsu. Yoshiko then touched Naruto's breasts, Naruto immediately blushed. Okay you are missing then answer me this. How did it feel when I touched you there? Naruto blushed and spoke, his voice was different higher in pitch and definitely female. It felt good, but I am not sure if I am actually ready for people to touch me that way. Naruto admitted. Yoshiko blushed. I am sorry Naruto-kun. I am just testing a theory. Yoshiko knew something was wrong. How does he actually have real breasts, minus the I am guessing that the clouds are a type of Jinjutsu that only he can do. Naruto blushed as he didn't understand what was going on. I did it right didn't I? Haku walked over and put her hand up to his breast but did not touch. May I Naruto-kun? Naruto nodded as Haku gently touched him. Naruto's eyes rolled into the back of his head and he let out a moan. I see it does feel good to you doesn't it, Naruto-kun? Naruto nodded. You do know you're missing some things, don't you? Haku asked as she pulled her hand away, Naruto nearly followed the hand as her warm hand left a cold spot on his chest. The magazines didn't have any of the areas that were covered by clouds. I guess I let the guys leave it up to their imagination. Naruto admitted. Ishiko nodded to Naruto. You can release the jutsu. Naruto nodded and returned to his original form. Naruto-kun, you wanted to perfect the jutsu didn't you? Naruto's eyes lit up. Yeah it would be great if I could do that. Naruto excitedly exclaimed. Ishiko smirked as the rest of the girls also smirked. Well first you have to understand female anatomy. Naruto smiled innocently. Okay, what do I need to know first? Ishiko looked at Hinata. Hinata-chan can you help Naruto-kun with the lips and face? Hinata blushed but nodded. Naruto-kun re-engage your henge but with clothes this time. Make her our age also. Thus the rest of the afternoon went learning what it was to be female. A good time was had by all and at the end of the day all remained virgins, at least physically. Naruto had to spend the night in the guest bedroom because of losing consciousness from blood loss. 
seeing all the girls in their birthday suits didn't lend itself to keeping him conscious. Naruto didn't forget his night of show and tell anytime soon as the girls would always giggle and sigh contently in his presence. This annoyed Sakura as the girls always seemed to appear after the team meetings. It also annoyed Sasuke as Yoshiko and Haku were in the group and they had kept on turning him down time and time again. How could the dope have all the luck with the girls now after he kept on striking out with Sakura? The gates of Konoha came into sight as Naruto was excited to be home. Yoshiko looked fondly upon the other blonde. Naruto is nearly healed from his encounter with Kabuto. He will be able to start training tomorrow. I will have to work with him on his chakra control so that he can eventually use the Rasengan one-handed. Now if the girls would be waiting for him it would be great. Ishiko thought as she then saw four females decked out in formal kimonos. Haku wore a dark blue with white snowflakes, Hinata wore a light purple with lavender flowers on it, Isoribi wore a jade green kimono with carp on it, and Yakuma wore a brown kimono with trees on it. Naruto and Jiraiya were awestruck by the appearance of four lovely girls waiting for their arrival. Tsunade was also impressed as she leaned down to whisper to Yoshiko. So they are the harem? Tsunade teased. Yoshiko smirked at the comment and her reply shocked her mother. That was the idea. Hinata walked to the group and bowed as the other girls bowed behind her. Welcome back to Kanoha Lady Tsunade, we bring you and your group greetings and hope your journey was not too fraught with danger. Hello Naruto-kun, we bring greetings to you too. Thank you hi uga -san. we appreciate you girls coming out to greet us on our return. Tsunade returned the courtesy. Now if you will lead us to the Hokage's tower we can get down to business and fix up this village. As you wish Tsunade sama Hinata replied as the girls again bowed and then led the group to the tower. Upon arriving Hinata spoke up for the group. We have to leave you now Hokage sama but we will visit you later. She then turned to Naruto. Naruto-kun we will also see you later. Hinata wore a smirk and then winked at him as she and the other girls left the area. Naruto was dumbstruck and didn't know what to do other than babble. Oh yeah right Hinata-chan what just happened? Naruto questioned as the adults and Yoshiko just laughed. What? Well, mother you need to go to the office and then to the hospital as I am sure that Naruto-kun will want to have both of his teammates, Sasuke and Kakashi healed. Yoshiko commented. Anzu appeared on the stairs with an angry look on his face and stared directly at Yoshiko. Yoshiko, you will take the offer or suffer the consequences. Yoshiko sighed and rolled her eyes. Danzu team, just go and jump off a mountain, preferably one near Kumo. Danzu moved forward only to be intercepted by both Tsunade and Jiraiya. Why are you threatening the daughter of the Hokage? Tsunade asked with thinly veiled anger. Danzu quickly corrected his posture. I'm sorry Tsunade Haim, I was just trying to instill the value of agreeing to the agreement the council has given to your daughter. It is in the village's best interests. Ishiko laughed. You guys want me to marry his teammate, right? Yoshiko pointed at Naruto. I would rather marry Naruto-kun today than be bothered by that bastard Sasuke again. As a matter of fact, Naruto-kun. Yoshiko asked as she turned to Naruto. Will you marry me? Naruto was slightly taken aback by this quick turn of events. His mind was moving almost as fast as the situation. Ah, uh, how do I answer that? Anzu smirked and immediately spoke up. You say no, so that she can be with the proper person not a peasant like you. Danzu knew not to call Naruto demon in public. Naruto got angry at the treatment the old man had given him. Listen, old man. Yoshiko-chan asked me not you. I truthfully have no idea how to answer that question, but I would be damned if she will be forced to marry someone she doesn't want to. Tsunade smirked as Naruto had defended Yoshiko's honor while not insulting her. You continue to amaze me Naruto. If you wish it I will allow you to be betrothed to my daughter. That is if you want to be. But, there is a slight problem. Naruto admitted as Tsunade raised an eyebrow. I do like Yoshiko-chan, but I also like Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan. I just don't know what to do. Anzu get out of my way and go do something productive like attack a cloud village outpost by yourself. Jirei offered, much to everyone's delight, except for Danzu. Tsunade lead the way up the stairs as they met Shikamaru and his father. Tsunade and Shikaku spend some time talking and reacquainting themselves. So Naruto, who's the blonde? Shikamaru inquired. She is the new Hokage and she is Yoshiko-chan's mother. Naruto admitted as Yoshiko nodded. Am Naruto, you are troublesome, you go and bring back the new Hokage and even know her daughter. Shikamaru made the comment in such a way that he was asking Yoshiko if she liked Naruto, to which she just nodded and smiled. Man, so troublesome, hey dad let's get home before mom makes life too much trouble. Shikamaru called to his father who broke the conversation to join his son on their trip home. Naruto waved goodbye to Shikamaru as the group entered the tower. Upon entering Himura and Kaharu greeted them. Welcome Lady Tsunade, we hope your trip back wasn't too hectic. Tsunade features darkened. We did meet up with my old teammate and his apprentice. 
Now we have a couple things to do now that the formal greetings are over. Naruto, take me to your teammate so we can get them healed and back to work. You bet. Naruto happily responded as the group headed to the hospital. Naruto leaned into Yoshiko's ear and asked a simple question. So what do we do at dinner, I've never been invited to anyone's house before. Yoshiko frowned for a second, then her face brightened. After we take care of your friends we will go shopping and then work on your manners. Naruto smiled then he blanched. Manners. Aren't mine okay as they are? Yoshiko shook her head. My mother is now the Hokage, and she is from a line of Hokages. I see that she has learned to trust again, thank you. Yoshiko pointed to the necklace as Naruto blushed. Don't worry I will help you with getting proper clothing, and we'll work on your manners. Trust me, if she gets drunk she might even make you Hokage and not even know it. Yoshiko joked as Naruto snickered. Hey you two, what are you talking about? Tsunade asked. Yoshiko looked over her shoulder with a smile. Nothing mother. Yeah right and I win all my bets when good things are happening. Tsunade retorted as both youths laughed. Can't you teach this kid any respect Jiraiya? What can I say? He doesn't respect anybody, why do you think he calls me Irosenin? Jiraiya retorted as Naruto and Yoshiko chuckled at his statement. See what I mean? It's not that bad Irosenin. I could just call you pervert instead of perverted sage. Naruto commented as Yoshiko openly laughed. You want me to hurt you Naruto? Jiraiya threatened. 